with participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television. Remote meeting connections are listed on our agenda, which can be found on our town website. Um, on the right, down by the calendar, you'll see all our upcoming meetings. You'll see the Select Board Board of Health meeting for tonight. You can click on that and then click on the agenda. Then you can click on the Zoom link, which will get you to this meeting here. Or you can dial in if you're watching on FCAT, 312-626-6799. The meeting ID is 911-604. 1580 and the passcode should you need it is 570012. Um, meeting attendees should mute their phones, uh, star six for landlines, unless um, asking a question or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Um, the chair declares a quorum of select board and board of health members in attendance. Uh, the, clear, the chair declares an open meeting may be detrimental effect on the litigating position of a public body. And um, so I will entertain a motion. Okay, I'll read that motion. Session. Yep. Um, motion for executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, the select board may enter into executive session to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation with EBI Consulting, as the chair declares that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town. Do we have a second? Dave Wolf from second. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. We'll have a roll call vote. We will also be inviting in um, Casey Warren and Kevin um, Scarborough, our highway uh, superintendent, and Chris Curtis, our consultant with um, for the MVP program. Mm -hmm. So roll call vote is Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolfram. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. So we will, we will be coming out in open session probably sometime after 6, 6 p.m., just for people to know. And we'll be going into um, energy committee will be the bike lanes, and we will be discussing pollinators and stormwater, then move right ahead to Kelleher Drive and zoning for people that are interested. Great. Okay. Thank you very, very much, everybody. We'll be right back. Thank you, everybody. We are now back in open session. Um, is David David there? Okay. Uh, where's David? What happened to David? I don't even see Trevor. There he is. He may have his camera off. Okay. Off. Do you see Dave? David? Jason? Hello. Oh, which David? Uh, oh. Gilbert Keith just. Oh, said, yes. Hi, David. Hello. I heard you. I was Hi. looking for David Wolfram. Ah. He left the uh, executive session, and I don't know what Let happened. Let me text him, Carolyn. Tell him he might have to re-enter the meeting. So we're gonna okay. get we're gonna get going. Uh, is Trevor? Where's Trevor now? Oh, I see Trevor walking around. Okay. Thank you. I see the energy committee is here. Have you um, opened your meeting, energy committee? Uh, didn't know we were calling this a meeting, but well, when you have a quorum, you have to. Oh well, then uh, I <laughs> guess Greg, Lori, do you want to move that we open in a meeting? No, it wasn't posted as a meeting. Oh, it wasn't posted? Okay. So All right. They, nope. they can listen. They just can't make any decisions. And right. They oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought it was posted meeting. Um, no, we have a meeting tomorrow. So. Oh, okay. So everyone is, everyone is just here on an informational basis. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Exactly. I'm sorry. That was my fault. All right. Um, so we'd like to hear about your bike lanes. Take it away, Greg. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read a little thing that I, um, just a short paragraph, um, explaining my interest in bike lanes, which comes from having had the opportunity years ago to use a bike lane to commute to work between Northampton and Florence. And it was a great experience. I had never lived in any place that had one before. And um, they had a bike path, actually, not a bike lane. Um, and my participation in the 2012 Streetscapes and Livability Plan 
here where um, a lot of people expressed an interest in having bike lanes and some wonderful plans were drawn up and you know ideas talked about and my interest in doing what I can to help reduce our community's carbon footprint. What I would like to share with you tonight is a draft proposal for a network of bike paths and bike lanes that will make our roads safer for people on bikes by designating bike lanes on the main roads going through the center of South Deerfield and by building paths behind the town hall and the library for walking and cycling that will connect the town buildings in the center to the schools. Um, I'd also like to thank um, Peter LaBarbera and Julie Cavaco and my son for helping me put together this map that I'm gonna try to show you now. Um, I haven't, Jennifer, and I wanna thank Jennifer for um, walking me through the process of sharing the screen. I think I know what to do to get this to happen now. So are you guys seeing my screen now? Yes. Great, okay. So this is a map that um, I put together, which um, if you look at the white lines, those are all existing roads or um, sidewalks um, in the case of the schools, um, where I'm suggesting that we put bike lanes where we stripe those, um, those already built um, roadways so Wait, that- uh, If you hit present, it'll be bigger. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Oh, great. Forgot about yeah. that. That's <laughs> that. Okay, so um, I didn't include Sugarloaf Street and Elm Street, um, or mm -hmm. the whole thing, but basically the extensions would go to the ends of, of the four streets going into the center of South Deerfield, which obviously is right here with the triangle. So um, what I'm suggesting is that we stripe the roads initially just North Main Street and South Main Street because it's obviously gonna be much more complicated to do the streets that the town doesn't own. Mm -hmm. um, Sugarloaf Street, I guess, and Elm and uh, Park Street, obviously you guys know more about that than me, but those yeah. are more complicated. And there are also a lot more um, issues around the center with parking and with um, the placement of the lanes in relation to the parking, because um, you obviously don't want to put a bike lane right next to where the cars are parked because someone could get hit with a door opening and that kind of thing. So that needs to be much more carefully thought out. But what I'm hoping we can do is get the lanes striped on the main roads that go to and from the schools, um, especially North Main and the and Pleasant Street. So um, when you get to Pleasant Street, let me just switch the screen here, um, this is a shot going to, down North Main Street towards the school. And this is from the, um, the center of town looking down North Main Street. And as you all know, there obviously was a grass strip that went from the center of town um, on both sides of North Main Street all the way down. Um, and this is at the farther end of North Main Street where that grass strip picks up again. But this space in the middle is just, there's a no man's land of pavement, which is really potentially dangerous. I, um, I almost saw, saw my son get hit by a car because when he was first learning how to use a bicycle, he didn't realize that the sidewalk is you know, just over here and that he's supposed to just stay in that part of the road. And um, the, on both sides of the street, it could be very easily, you know, added in and it's level here and it's level there. The road, um, the pavement slopes off where the grass strip used to be. So it would be a little bit more problematic. I'm just gonna scroll through some of these photographs so that you all um, can see the same things that I'm talking about. So in the center of town, I would suggest that we not even, you know, think about that at the moment because there's so many other things going on with the town common committee and the redesign of the common. So I would suggest that it, it, you know, it end here by the Leary lot and that there be a, you know, a bike rack somewhere near where it ends so that people could, you know, could easily stop and go and do their shopping or whatever they wanted to do in the center. Um, this is just an example of a community where there is a bike lane, which I don't think is a particularly well designed one because the parking basically would, has people backing up into the bike lane as opposed to designs where you have um, the bike lane right on next to the sidewalk or where there's a protected bike lane 
and an actual buffer, which um, in the 2012 streetscapes proposals was something that um, people had done drawings of that is really nice, but also very expensive. Um, this is Northampton, a little bit wild, but um, very effective in terms of keeping the car separated from the bicyclists. Um, this is another example of the same thing where you've got a, a protected bike lane. Yeah. So um, the issue with getting to the schools on Pleasant Street, especially, um, is there's a real serious problem because, as you can see in the foreground, um, there is a, a stripe. It's a very narrow um, striping, but it doesn't go from the corner of North Main Street, which is over here, all the way to the schools. It just picks up near the school, but there's nothing between here and um, the center. You can see this car mm -hmm. um, or whatever the shot shows both sides of the road have the striping in that area, but nothing between um, that point and North Main Street. So, um, Where's, where back. was it? Can you go back one more? What was that picture of? This is Pleasant Street looking towards North Main Street. So no, that's uh, not. No, that's the high school frontier. parking lot. Oh, this oh. Is oh, yeah, Frontier. Okay, got oh, it. Yeah, it's I'm frontier. Sorry, <laughs> I mixed that one up. Um, yeah. Okay, nope, that's right. good to see. But okay. actually, actually, I'm um, glad you caught me because that's something else that I wanted to just mention. Um, obviously, the school would need to be very involved in anything here. But mm -hmm. when um, people would be coming from a bike lane on North Main Street to into the school, there's an enormous amount of traffic, as any of you with parent with um, kids in the high school know in the morning, and mm -hmm. it's complete chaos. But I think it would be a very good idea to have something coming from the bike lane on North Main Street along the entrance um, of the, the high school that would then go out the, mm -hmm. the exit on the other side to just mm -hmm. define for people, you know, a space that is theirs and, you know, that people can use safely and that would also lead to the bike racks. Yeah, and I know that uh, Frontiers, you know, Capital is working on redoing that whole parking lot. So it'd be a good time to kind of approach the school committee and talk to them about when they redesign that, um, could we factor in, you know, some safety and lines? And I know they were going to rework that whole, um, you know, how, how kids park and re redo all that stuff. So it's a great time to kind of bring that up now as they're, as they're getting into planning of that. So great thought, Greg. Thanks. Um, part of the, design, so the only other thing I wanted to say is just that, you know, realistically, and it's a long, slow process to get all this to happen. But if we can stripe the primary routes between the center of town and the schools, I think it will um, accomplish a lot, both in terms mm -hmm. of making the road safer for people and slowing down the traffic in the center of South Deerfield, especially on North Main Street between the center and the schools, because it will um, give people uh, guidelines, basically. Yep. Okay. Greg, did Great. you want to mention the other path? Um, Sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, actually, David, you, you were the one that had the, um, the suggestion of Well, going it was just a suggestion, back. but if you go back to the map, yeah. it, it seems like the schools are the primary thing. And Greg had mentioned that the street gets narrow, especially this one. Well, the um, which one, are you one, one to the elementary school yeah. Pleasant. gets too narrow. So I was wondering if we could have people come down by the town offices mm -hmm. and go to the back side of the elementary school and then swing left around the elementary school so they're not going right through the playground. And then Oh, I had drawn it that okay, but anyway, yes, yeah, so around here. Yeah, I could go I you can't see my pointer, can you? No. <laughs> um, I was, I, my little pointer is going the opposite way around the school. Instead of the bike yep. path as you go north, turning right, right it would go left, probably yep. along the tree line toward the parking side yep. you know, where there's some courts or something. I, I think we so, always wanted a walking. Um, we did. A walking trail. I mean, we always envisioned this as you know, behind the library, behind the senior center, behind the church, the town hall, and then yep. your connection so people could walk safely 
yeah. without ever having to be on any roadway. So right. making, it, making it a bike lane as well would not be um, something that we, you know, um, yeah. I mean, that would be kind of exciting. It would. Um, because especially if little kids are starting to learn to ride bikes and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it's a safe place to do that. And and for yeah. seniors or anybody, just to, we, I always had envisioned like when there's a ball game going on at, at in Memorial and something happening at the library and something over at the schools that people could, you know, have a, a full walking loop around, you know, with a bench here and there to rest. But, um, you know, so tying in a bike lane to that kind of plan yeah. just seems like a great idea. Yeah, no, we've always we always anticipated putting up a few benches along the way so people could walk from bench to bench kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Great idea. Uh, so, Trevor, yeah, how, how do we integrate this? I mean, we've, we're deciding yep. to use Berkshire design on this. Yes. So how, how do we integrate this with what you're doing with the town common? Yeah, so, so I have think consistency here. I've been talking with uh, Jeff Squire a lot and, and uh, Greg is on our town uh, common uh, ad hoc committee as well. And we've been discussing kind of how do we pull this kind of larger master plan and not a master plan as far as what the town does, but a, a kind of a master blueprint of how, how our town is going to consistently look with all these different projects going along. And, um, you know bike lanes is part of that and the walking path is part of that and how do we break up the parking and the um, traffic in and out of the town hall with the police station the police station is going to have their own dedicated entrance and exit so it's safer and they're not zipping around the building to get out to a call fast when you know ball games are happening and that kind of thing so we're um i really want to engage um jeff squire to to and i have an estimate to start an initial kind of master plan. I have an estimate to get get going on some of that engineering. And I would love to bring this plan to him, working with Greg and say, look, this is kind of a, a first go at this. We want to get our bike lanes drawn in. We also want to get a walking path going around and we all want it to be consistent. So it looks the same kind of materials wherever we are in town, um, you know, along with our common, along with Elm Street, along with the sidewalks you know, we're looking at capital for sidewalks this year and, you know, whether we can pull it off, we're not sure, but um, we have all these things in our capital plan and just to tie them all in together to have them consistent. So when we do something, you know, we don't lay a bike path down and realize, well, that's, that's actually where the police parking is going to be or, you know, that kind of thing. So I just, I think we're very close to doing that. And um, I had invited, um, uh, Jeff Squire to a to an upcoming select board meeting so I could get the blessing of the select board to start moving with him. Um, him and Berkshire Design as our, you know, as our uh, kind of engineers to get to get working on this. I've talked to, um, you know, they're doing the track up in the top left corner of the picture. Berkshire Design is designing that track and um, ha, ha, is designing now the town common work. And I would just think, you know, it'd be great to to have them kind of pull all this together into a plan that we could kind of get moving on and you know and i agree that you know we could separate out the the north main street and and stuff to the schools maybe um once we get a quick plan you know laid out that could be something that could get done earlier than um than waiting for you know a whole plan to happen so you know i i i think where greg's coming from is like let's get started on something and I, I am all about that. And as long as we can just make sure that, you know, that makes sense and we're not going to put a bike lane in just to have it, you know, scraped off. Kevin had um, given me some information that um, that you could, there's a state requirement that you can no longer just black out or paint over a line. What if you have a line on the, like this line that you see on the side of the road now, you can no longer, before you could kind of black over that and then repaint. You now have to, it doesn't look like sandblast, but water blast that off of the pavement completely. You can no longer black it out. It's got to be completely removed. So we just want to think hard about where we put the lines and, and come up with a good plan for that. We certainly have plenty of real estate uh, to work with. So I'm sure we could get something laid out that would make sense regardless of what we do. Um, so I, I would invite him to our next cup, you know, upcoming meeting to kind of get moving on this stuff. Trevor, what you um, and Casey, you were on Monday's meeting at the CPI. Um, yes. 
what what money do we have right now for the planning or, or, or was it for next so year? there was an estimate i had right now so i don't have anything uh labeled for money right now i have about a ten thousand i think it's around ten thousand dollar estimate to have berkshire design get started on on an initial plan obviously that would grow once they got into actually designing something specific but um just to get a, a, a blueprint and a guidance going of kind of a master plan and pull all these projects together. I think I, I can forward that estimate again, but that's to get, get started. I don't have that on our capital. Okay. I, I think, I think we need to have that on the capital because it's going to go over 10,000. I'm sure. Yeah. And so, yes, we should definitely so we do need that. To, we need to adjust that um, mm -hmm. and put that on, but you're not, are you drawing money from this year, from this year, the uh, 21? The only money I have for 21 right now is the common work that we're um, doing. We also have $10,000. Uh, we also have $40,000 in reserve for complete streets work. So that can certainly, you know, we, we probably could tap some of that money if we're starting complete okay. street work. This falls into complete street and we had... We had some money set aside for that. So I think there is some money set aside from years past that we could start some of this engineering. Okay, so you could start it now. Yes. But I think we should put in additional adjust for adjust for the C CIPC meeting. Um, our next one, which mm -hmm. is Casey, when is the next one? Um, I, I think, think the next CIPC meeting. We're going to do a joint one on the 7th or 8th or something like that. Yeah, but so we, we wanted to have, have a joint meeting with finance and the select board and CIPC on the 7th. Yes. But Jack Davey is going to be presenting the plan uh, to finance, the draft plan to the finance committee next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Okay, so next, that's the um, next that's Tuesday. That's the tabletop. Well. Yeah, that's a tabletop, so none of us can be there, but. Yeah, and I have a joint um, school committee meeting. Um, okay, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to figure out how we can adjust the request and, the, and the, uh, what Jack is, is um, presenting, because I think we need to put in some more money mm -hmm. for this, because it's gonna be over 10,000, and, and we want to include this. We can start it now, yeah, because we do have we do have like forty thousand for complete street works and, and bike lanes falls right. into complete street work and right. the other so items you work. could you could tap into that to start and then then but we need we should put something in we have to, to do, do a revised request. Yeah, we need to put a revised okay. I think CAPC needs to meet so, and discuss it. So okay. I would make a motion that the select board present a revised request to the FY twenty two. CIPC um, plan that would encompass these bike lane. Um, okay. I don't want to say design because it's not a design, right. but it, it's a suggestion. And that we'll, so what we're going to do is take Greg's ideas and then follow up with some actual design work to make it happen. Okay. Great. Within the framework of complete streets. I Within think, yeah, framework. I yeah. think so. That makes sense. Does that make sense to you, Dave? Are you? Yeah, it does. Okay, so yeah, we're going to uh, so we're going to start. Yeah, so it's for start. a study and not the actual engineering. Right. This is just to make sure that we actually have consistent design work. So yes. what we're going to do is take Greg's concept, start the start work with existing money now under the complete streets, by having Berkshire mm -hmm. Design look at it. And then actually put in a revised request already for the upcoming mm -hmm. fiscal 22 CIPC um, request that would encompass the actual that finish works. of the design work um, mm -hmm. yep. so that we can actually implement it correctly and get it going. Sounds good. Okay. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Yeah. All right. It's a long motion. Well, yeah. I know it's complicated, but what we want to do is make sure yeah. that it start yeah. happening this fiscal year right now. Right. And yeah. we have, when we get it finished in the next fiscal year so that we can actually 
have ke give some direction and help to Kevin. And if we get money somewhere or whatever, right. um, and we're doing something, we actually know what we're doing. Well, we have, you know, we're hoping we're all fingers are crossed for in, um, investment from the federal government for infrastructure stuff. And if this stuff is planned out and shovel ready, you know, or paintbrush ready, you know, we can hopefully tap into some of these grant money to get things paid for. Yeah, we, we need to, um, we need to make sure that was what we messed up in 2008. We were never able to take care, take advantage of any of that stimulus package stuff from the federal government because we had no shovel ready projects. Kevin, Kevin's still on the line? Yeah, Kevin's still okay. here. Kevin, I was going to ask a question. There was some comments that I heard uh, from residents about line painting and crosswalk painting. Uh, from my understanding, we do that like every year, every other year anyways, right? It every just kind of wears off, right? Every year, yeah. Every oh, year uh, we do it. You know, I know that there were some complaints, you know, in the social media sphere of like, why don't, you know, the these things are, you know, people are going to get run over because you can't see the crosswalk. But I, I just, I was about to comment, but I just wanted to make sure I was right. I think we painted them last year and every year they get painted. That is correct. We, yeah. we paint them every year. I mean, people have to recognize the fact that we're still technically in winter. Mm -hmm. We haven't really gotten into spring cleanup at all, <clears throat> what, yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Um, one of the other issues we run into is, is because historically that is paid for by town money. Right. Town money is is now because of how it is, I'm stuck into the timing of it has to wait until after July 1st. Right. Or if somebody can give me another 20 grand now, right. I can go ahead and do them. And then I will have the 20,000 in my budget for next spring. Right. But I need to be able to break the cycle because right. the cycle is you. now is is because of timing. Exactly. I'm there. First. Now we have gone a step further within highway and we will, we now are going to be taking care of the crosswalks, the stop lines and the parking lines. So that's going to save us okay. some money there. And yes. basically the, the contractors will be what we call long lines. Right. So a bike then, lane per se. Exactly. Yeah. But again, remember, you know, for that to happen, that happens with the crew of five, Right. Um, that still has right. to try and deal with everything else we're trying to deal with. Anybody's noticed. I mean, we've been on tree detail for about yeah. seven weeks and, yeah. you know, and we're, we're pushing the guys pretty hard to get this done. And, mm -hmm. you know, we'll move on to next because now paving is going to be next. So now we're right. going to move over to paving. Um, and these are all infrastructure things that we mm -hmm. have to make sure that we, we maintain. Um, you know, yeah. we get, we, we get to what we can when we can, you know, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. unless, we get more help or yeah. or more money and i'll just hire it out so right. it's those are my two choices yep maybe maybe at the end of the year we can i mean you know how we are allowed that up to five percent transfer kevin mm -hmm. or maybe we can go to the finance committee and ask for a transfer just to get you to straighten you out on this yeah because if if i can get money now i can get i can get lines painted probably within the next month yeah um you know which will bring me to may now because because we're still asking for it just now. That's why it's going to take a while for us to get into the queue. Right. You know, because right now I'm already into the queue for the middle of July. Mm -hmm. I, I've already, because we've got yeah. a pretty good idea on who it's going to be. And I just kind of hedge my bets and say, okay, the middle of July, I want you guys to come out. And they're like, well, what if we don't we're have awesome. the bid? And I'm like, well, then I won't use you. I'll go. Right. So I'm, I'm hedging my bets, um, which yeah. works out pretty well for me each year. Yeah. When do you have to make the decision who you're who you're going to have doing the striping? Uh, basically, the striping. What we do is we we put everything out to bid, um, and the, the, all of that information was already put out to the Franklin County Cog. Oh God, when did I do that? Beginning of the month was yeah. I think the fifth was the was the deadline, and that included anything from paving to materials to um, diesel gas mm -hmm. uh propane you name it that's our that's my bid season yep um so but that's only by you know for an estimate so let's go on the thought process that everything all the um planets align and we have the opportunity to go ahead and know exactly how to put down the bike lane so it looks proper then we could go ahead and move forward with that right you know, it's, it's right. it'll be fairly easy yeah, it may not take too much to get, you know, uh, at least just North Main figured out, you know, right. something like that. 
Okay. Just because okay. that that just first be section clear. between the center of town and you go to the to the very first corner, Bloody Brook Corner, that one's kind of a no brainer. You're going to be able to knock that out, no problem. But yeah. as soon as you hit that corner, you're going to have a problem because now you're going to have to have yeah. a shared road there. Yeah. Because yeah. there's no way unless you go ahead and you blow that guardrail out and widen the road, or right. if you go ahead and blow that out, and then now you have to on the inside of that guardrail, you'll have crosswalk or uh, sidewalk and bike lane, which right. is a possibility. Right. Um, and then you're going to tighten up because of the, um, the, the first culvert right there. Yep. And then you have the opportunity to widen out a little bit again, going mm -hmm. the rest of the way up North Main. And then yep. obviously, as soon as you hit the bridge, right. it's gone again until you yeah. get to the other side of the bridge. So there's going to be a lot of shared areas sure. um, that that are it's that's what they do. You it know, they do is. they do what they can. And then once you get to a certain point, there's a sign saying this is now shared with the bicycle and not a right. dedicated lane. Correct. David had a comment. Well, I just wanted to be clear: the twenty thousand that you're talking about right now isn't for painting the bike lanes; it's for correct. correcting That's all the correct. existing. Correct. Yeah. That is just existing what we do now. Yeah. Correct. Other yeah. than the fact that I have a problem with people hitting somebody because they can't see the crosswalk, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I think and, that's and, why and, it's, it's it's we should be able to do some kind of reserve transfer. I mean, this is a safety yeah. issue, and we can yeah. break the site your cycle, Kevin. Right. Um, no, that that would be convenient, you know. And like I said, you know, as long as I can, as long as I can break people away from what we're trying to get done, you know, I mean, I can, I can afford. I've got a little bit of paint money left over from from last season that yeah. I can physically buy paint with because technically it's line paint, right? Um, and then we can go ahead and do it. But again, when we do that, that's you know, I, people go, well, you're trying to use too many people, but I mean, realistically, you need minimum three people to be able to go sure. ahead and move move fast enough to be able to do what you need to do you got to set up the cones and as soon as that area dries then you're going to jump back over and get the other side done cone it off paint it up and as that oh, was yeah. going then you're jumping to the next one so you know it's it's, it's not just two yeah, people doing it it now in, encompasses my entire crew right which means right. nothing else gets done right so right. i All need right, to just Kevin. make change my priorities i guess so. okay so kevin what we're going to do is have you if you could put together what it's going to cost We'll um, advocate for you um, to um, for a reserve transfer just from a safety point of view. I, I mean, I feel like yeah, this is. I mean, people. We don't want people to be hit. No, so, no, understood. So let's yeah. fix this. Um, in the in the meantime, we have a motion on the table to um, further this um, design this work. Design work. So yeah. um, if well, there's no more motion. discussion. Okay. No, you already did. Oh, I did. Okay, great. It's been a while. <laughs> okay. Been a so now we're going to, we're going to vote on it. So all those in favor. All right, Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Wolfram. I Carolyn Ness. Okay. So we're going to move forward with it as much as we can, Greg. Okay. Um, right now, this year, and then out of this year's money, but then um, put something together for the CIPC. Okay. Great. Yeah. We'll get it okay. in the right direction. All Thank right. you for your advocacy, Greg. And I really appreciate it. On this for a long time. So. Yeah, we're just we're really so anxious to get going and make sure that something is connecting everything. Yep. Up and down town. Okay, we're okay. running kind of late, so I'm yep. sorry to move on. It's so exciting when people are so yes, thank you all um, for joining. excited about things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. So um, we here. have um, the next item on the agenda is pollinators and stormwater presentation by um, the FERCOG and Kimberly oh, no. is not not coming. So we have pollinators uh, being presented by H Helena is oh, okay. Are you Oh, hi. Okay. I see you. So why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself. And um, I'm mute myself because we got dogs barking. <laughs> okay. Well, um, hi, I'm, my name is Helena Farrell and I'm a land use and natural resources planner at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Um, thank you for having me on the agenda tonight. Um, there's a lot going on and I'm really appreciative that you're, you're fitting me in. Um, I think the, especially the stormwater project is um, gonna be timely for and regarding the conversation that you were just having um, because it includes some recommendations for Pleasant Street that um, I'll be excited to review with you because you might be able to fold them into the engineering work that you're, um, sounds like you'll, you're eager to move forward. So it's very timely and a good opportunity to um, give you something that can be taken um, along with that. 
in hopefully a pretty streamlined way. Um, in addition, we also have a regional pollinator plan, which, um, so these, the stormwater and the pollinator plan are both projects out of the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. Mm -hmm. And um, Kimberly has developed these um, scopes of work. Um, the, the regional pollinator plan is with eight towns in Franklin County. Um, together, they incorporate an east-west corridor and a north-south corridor. Um, Deerfield is not one of our, our towns for the regional pollinator plan, um, but you're curious about it, um, yeah. so I'm told. So that's why I was asked to, um, to provide some information. Um, how much time do I have and do I have screen sharing privileges or yeah, please, would you rather just have it. like a snippet? No, no, Absolutely, please, go right ahead. Please share. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear it. I just want to say that we are definitely interested in the pollinator program and okay. we would like to be part of that, I believe. Um, obviously, we haven't had a vote, but um, the high school is, is you know, we have, we're always interested in having the pollinator curriculum from the National Association of Conservation Districts and in the high school is interested in that and we um, purchased the park property as part of um, sort of an educational outreach kind of thing and um, we also are trying to encourage our residents to do um, have dragonflies because dragonflies are voracious mosquito eaters um, both on the larvae and adult mosquitoes so we're very very interested in all that kind of stuff so go ahead sorry yeah, please, yeah. Um, that's great and um, the the regional pollinator plan actually was um, sort of conceived and um, has been in the planning process for a couple of years now. So um, I think we would have to find a way to extend some of the findings to um, to Deerfield mm -hmm. because um, you know right now our time our towns are kind of locked in and we're doing a planning process with them. But mm -hmm. we'll have a bunch of resources that come out of that, and you know we should just re you should just reach out to. Kimberly and, and see if we can put together a scope of work um, that really fits what you need for Deerfield. Um, mm -hmm. We'd be really excited to do that. Right now, we'll be finishing up our work um, by June 30th and it'll be there. So there'll be an action plan for each town and, um, and then a, a full Franklin County Regional Pollinator Plan. Um, but part of that work is creating a set of toolkits that other towns could take um, or, and use on their own. So yeah, we should, we should talk about um, a scope of work and, and it includes possibly um, some bylaw updates, um, some zoning regulatory language that um, towns can, can take as recommendations for improving um, bylaws around um, existing and new development to be pollinator friendly, um, but certainly a site design and a, something that incorporates the programming at the high school and the park and actual, um, you know, landscape interventions involving mm -hmm. um, high school students and educational opportunities is something that we we could do custom for for the town of Deerfield and um, would be really well equipped to do to do so and. Um, you know, we could engage, you know, engage the, the educational community in that. That'd be great. Awesome. Um, yeah. Do you so, want to see some, yeah, some please, slides yeah. about, okay. Yep, yeah, that'd be great. So do I have screen sharing? You should. Okay. If, if not, Jen could help us with it. Yes, you do. Okay, great. Thank you. So I'll show you the Shelburne Pollinator Action Plan PowerPoint because we just, Okay. Um, I was there on Monday, um, Monday night, talking to the Shelburne Open Space Committee. Um, and you'll be able to see some of the content that we're developing for each town. So, okay. <clears throat> so again, it's each town has their own action plan, but it'll be part of a, um, a Franklin County plan. So it's sort of the layers of assessment. 
And um, these are our eight communities. So from Heath to Orange, East to West, and Bernardston to Conway, North to South. That's kind of the big idea. And we do a landscape methodology in each town to identify the potential pollinator corridors and um, inventory those and then propose recommendations um, for protecting them and enhancing them. This is a little bit of background on um, native pollinators and why they're important, not only for ecosystem resilience, but agriculture. And who do we, you know, who do we have here in terms of native bees um, and other pollinators to Massachusetts? Um, those are some of the things we're inventorying. Great. Um, our landscape analysis methodology involves um, a number of data layers, but particularly the land cover and land use, because it's telling us what's actually on the, the physical land. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really useful um, because we can say, okay, we have forested wetland, we have a village center, we have um, a residential area with connected corridors between the parcels, and we have agricultural, we have forested lands, and you can infer the existence of certain pollinators based on what's on the land, because mm -hmm. you know that they have a relationship to those plants and, um, and natural ecosystems. So we're kind of using this to trace out where we think a lot of the corridors are in these communities. Um, this is a little excerpt of the town of Wendell where we did, we, that's the land cover and land use data map. And then we circled the, the dry areas, which are the yellow and the blue areas, which are the wetlands and um, identified where we might be able to infer the presence of um, pollinators based on what we are seeing on the landscape. Mm -hmm. And then we tease apart additional types of data and some of the data informs what strategies we're gonna recommend for different types of landscapes. So um, certainly the town owned properties are um, a key strategy because the town has you know, jurisdiction over those parcels and they often have um, parks and other amenities um, that would be very complementary to expanding pollinator habitat. So that's in green, but we're also looking at industrial and residential land uses um, to kind of help think about what's going to be occurring on the landscapes that would be complementary. We're looking at per permanently protected land. It's a, it's a good investment to build a garden on a piece of land that's permanently protected. So that's really useful information. Again, the land cover and land use on the right, and then on the left is our um, some of our essential natural resource areas, um, biomap core habitat and natural heritage habitat. So we we study these data layers with um, the the attendees, the the stakeholder groups who were able to pull to the table, and that's unfortunately been difficult, more difficult to do since um, COVID, mm -hmm. um, understandably. And, you know, we proposed this whole project before the pandemic. So we've had to adapt to eight communities um, of what would have been an extremely robust and engaged community process to, you know, take in all this data and reflect on where the best strategies and opportunities um, to expand and to protect the habitat that we know exists. Um, we have a mapping exercise where, you know, we drag the stars down and we place the, the stars um, to identify areas of, of value and interest to the community based on local knowledge. And we'll be, we'll be inventorying that and elaborating on that in our write-up. So yeah, that's that's the, the nutshell on okay. um, the Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Um, the other uh, project, which is very exciting to share. Um, let's see if I can figure out how to screen share again. Sure.
Helena, if you unsquare, unshare your screen and then yes, pick sharing. your next PowerPoint and reshare, it works easier, I think. Um, Scroll to the, yeah, there you go. Yep. Sorry, I did it for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. You like that. Did I get it? Yep. Yeah, there you go. So you're looking at the FERCOG letterhead? Yes. OK. So um, and you'll see you see the map of Deerfield now? Yes. OK, great. Um, so the Franklin County Stormwater Project um, is a, a, a pilot project, um, which we did reach out to Deerfield about. Um, the big idea here is um, to try and offer the town some recommendations for stormwater best management practices that they can fold in to planned infrastructure upgrades and road work. Um, so this is where I hope that we have a chance to um, fold this into um, what I heard you discussing a minute ago. And that was the intent of this, which is that um, Kimberly sends me out. I have a landscape architecture background and worked at a, an engineering firm um, Fuss and O'Neill and we did these um, stormwater site assessments. So she sends me out and I, I basically inventory the, the site. Um, it's, it's, you know, not extremely detailed, but um, gather the information um, on two sites and they're shown here in the orange, which is the Pleasant Street area that you were all just looking at. And then the second yep. site is up in, um, in Old Deerfield, and these were specifically chosen um, through a review of Deerfield's Complete Streets Prioritization Plan for yeah. having, um, and the, again, the intent, the explicit intent was to give the town some cursory recommendations from the FERCOG that it's like a pre-assessment and um, something for you to say, this has kind of been figured out already and to hand it over to the engineer who would then do the detail work. So um, yeah, so I went out to both sites. Um, I collected um, a, a information on the site. I took photographs, which I could share um, as well, either now or I, I could email them yeah. um, to the board and um, found that um, the old, Deerfield site um, is a great opportunity because of the extra wide utility strip. And I know there's buried utilities in there. So the, the big idea is, and it's maybe a question, but I feel pretty confident that it's possible to co-locate to co some stormwater BMPs in and around the existing buried utilities along Old Main Street. And this would allow for the um, effective and safe infiltration of stormwater from the proposed new sidewalk that is part of the prioritization plan. Mm -hmm. um, I found that um, not only do you want to shed the water quickly from the sidewalk, you want to infiltrate that water away from the sidewalk so that it doesn't hold the ground, hold moisture in yeah. the ground for a long time and then that moisture so, ends up leading, you know, it eventually damages the sidewalk and undermines your investment. So, right, right. Um, so there's a benefit there. I also noticed that the, the street does not have curbs, which is an opportunity to infiltrate the stormwater from the street as well. And some of the photos that I just pulled together show actually how there is water shedding from the existing sidewalk and the street already into the very wide utility um, zone in certain places. So the existing grading is actually already doing this and it could be improved with a little bit of sort of deliberate design and intervention by your engineer who would be coming through here to do the complete streets designs. Okay. And there'd be fun activities potentially like um, the, the radar, the, the ground penetrating radar to figure out where all the utilities are. So mm -hmm. um, it'd be a very careful um, study and very interesting. So I wrote that all up in these assessments and provided a little sketch. 
Um, this is the curve on Pleasant Street where here we are now shooting down yeah. to um, South Deerfield. Yeah. Um, this was the second site on your Complete Streets project that um, I was really excited about because again, it is something that you might be able to fold into your process um, that you already have coming up and it would yeah. provide a huge benefit um, not only to the infrastructure that's going in and protecting that and having a way of managing the stormwater, but also improving um, and providing improved environmental benefits to this area. Um, we have this existing large parking lot from mm -hmm. the high school and, um, and Pleasant Street and their proximity to Bloody Brook. So, and then you have this open parcel, which from satellite imagery, it appears that it's kind of used for overflow parking. Mm -hmm. um, there are also tire tracks out there. Um, well, Helena, yeah. uh, I'm not to interrupt, but that whole parking lot is going to be um, replaced. And we're kind of doing some MVP work about making green infrastructure there and finding ways to, so this kind of all fits in really well to you yeah. know, what you're talking about. Because we cool. do have the bloody brook there, and we want to retain the water, and you know, deal deal with the parking and and the water flow and runoff and all that. Great yeah, for filtration yeah. and stuff. But we do. So we're wondering if you. I don't think you're aware of what we're doing with the MVP program at the moment. No, and and I think that um, you know, really, this is as Kimberly put it, like this is the bonus fry in the bag of fries, mm. where like yeah. we, just, we give it to you, and you're like. Thanks, and yeah. um, if it helps you out, then then we've done our job. And Great. Um, but there's also no strings attached, um, yeah. unless you want to like keep us in the process and and have me involved. I'd love to help, but also like, yeah. you know, it's a we're it's it's a it's a study for the the county so that we can kind of figure out what this process needs to be um, to help our towns get these extra benefits, get these um, things that don't they're not built in, you know, mm -hmm. stormwater BMPs are not built into the complete streets program. Um, so we're trying to like figure out the process. Um, that's kind of like our reward Great. for doing this. And, but you get to kind of just take this um, little study that I've done and, and, you know, make it work for you. And um, here are um, BMP fact sheets to kind of help, um, provide some inspiration. And again, your engineers are gonna be familiar with all this stuff, but yeah. Um, well, but yeah. Great. It's really great, great work. I can't wait to, um, I'm gonna dig in and read it. So um, follow some links. Yeah, I have also some photos um, that I could okay. share. Sure. Um, okay. So Helena, what what is, um, so are you proposing more work on this or less work? Um. Or is this it? I think it's yeah, I mean, cool, right? this is this is essentially it, um, yeah. where we've you know we've done this assessment and handed it off, and um, the town gets to take it and um, you know and see what what's possible. Yeah. Um, are you seeing the photos now? I am. I'm seeing a really cracked up sidewalk. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> because the water is just hanging out. Right, freezing and thawing. And, yeah, yeah, but you know, you can see that the existing grading um, is conducive for utilizing this area. And even though there are buried utilities in here, you know, an engineer can be really specific, um, and maybe not everywhere. Um, just but just in key locations, if they did an assessment of the whole um, of that whole length, which yep. is you know, and the delineated area for the Complete Streets project is pretty much the whole length. Mm -hmm. um, so that there could be key areas. So here's this um, system that's already happening and this inlet um, drains over here on the other side of this fence. So, mm -hmm. you know, so that could be readily adapted to an actual bioretention area. Great. Yep, um, see what you mean now. Yep, so there's the inlet. And um, again, there's water pooling along the edge of the street, which could you know, be kind of moved over to a basin on the side. Um, but there's also wide verges where, and you can see the utility patch yep. here. 
but with these wide verges, verges you might be able to put um, basins in between some of the, the stately trees. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the... Yeah, Pleasant Street. Yeah. And what we and what you what are you proposing here on uh, Pleasant again? Your your thoughts on this or um, so, this area yeah. here? Well, so certainly um, the parking lot has a, a bunch of opportunities. Having big centralized fire retention areas in between the parking rows is yeah. great. And I'm you know I'm sure that the con that the engineers will. Um, will be familiar with a lot of these practices and will yeah. have ideas about where they can go. But I think that the opportunity with this open space is um, a number of things you could use this area, you know, like if you wanted to preserve part of it for overflow parking, you could maybe mm -hmm. do something along the edge, um, a practice that's a basin that actually receives runoff from the, um, the parking lot and then have, you know, hit it with a sediment for bay um, mm -hmm. right off the edge of the parking lot into a big bioretention basin that kind of hugs this, uh, you know, vegetated edge along the yep. brook. Um, yep. And then, you know, mirror that on the street side to capture runoff from Pleasant Street into another sediment for bay. Um, yep. And then um, increase the buffer you know, with some additional native tree plantings to help kind of protect the brook and increase that riparian buffer. Mm -hmm. So um, there's detail in the that first document I showed you with the assessments where you can yeah. re read some of these ideas. I just put them all on the map so it's That's great. All, all in one place and easy to read. Yep, great. Um, another idea is to include sidewalk basins for capturing runoff from the sidewalks when this sidewalk gets upgraded and they could be narrow. Um, and again, a great opportunity in this location because of the proximity to the school. So the educational um, component where students are walking to school and they're learning about infiltrating stormwater and how important that is in this era Absolutely. of intense heavy precipitation and then also planting those basins with pollinator gardens and you know you can have life cycles of the pollinators you can have the life cycles of the plant and the relationships and um it's a great way to learn about how that all works and maybe have some support with um with the student body in terms of main maintenance of the rain gardens mm -hmm. so so the bmp fact sheets have um details on what maintenance is involved and that's very important something that we take very seriously because we never want to recommend practices that are going to be overwhelming for towns or that will conflict with um you know other needs so um that's one of the big reasons why we included the fact sheets um for you so that you can see what's involved and again the engineers will also know um but bioretention areas it's usually twice a year where you just you know, clean out the, the dead plant material from the previous year, add some new mulch and um, pull out any sediment buildup or if someone's thrown their um, soda cup in there. So it's, yep. you know, it's it certainly is maintenance, but it's not too bad. And if you have um, an engaged student and educational community, then that can help. Yeah, that's great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you so much for having me and yeah, um, yeah reach out. Um, Kimberly and I would love to hear from you about doing some more um, supported pollinator um, planning for, for the town. That'd be really great. So yeah, yeah, we're interested. That'd be great. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Thank you Thank very you. much. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Um, we're, we're running a little behind here. Um, so is Kevin still on? I can't tell. Him. No, actually, he had to hop off. He's okay. been up since one in the morning. Yeah, I know. Uh, but he did give me the basics on the Kelleher Drive updates. If you want. Okay. Me. Could you, sure. Could you please do okay. that, Casey? Okay. So we're finishing up the project. There's still guardrail and paving to do, and the concrete blocks will not be removed until that guardrail is completed. Okay. 
Um, the other thing that we're waiting on is Eversource is going to be back to finish cleanup from that new electrical cable install that they had to do. Okay. So those are the highlights of what we're seeing. Um, and I realize that the residents are, are very, it, the project's been difficult for the residents, but we're, I think, in a, in a place where we're going to be substantially complete relatively soon. Um, just to follow up, I want to make sure we did not pay for the um, Eversource line, right? We did not. Okay, because we did do dig safe, and it was eighteen, at least eighteen feet away from where yes. they applied the line. Okay, yes. so there was no charge for that, oh, and we are finishing up with the. Um, does Kevin have a timeline on finishing this up? He needs. We need some estimates on the paving and the guardrail, so we're waiting on that. And we're also waiting. Zach is finalizing the change orders related to this, which actually I was going to bring this up in my town administrator's report, but it fits here. So Zach is finishing up the change order and payable request. And what I was going to ask the board is to authorize me to sign the change orders and any other contracts related to these MVP projects so that we can proceed. All right, getting them facilitated. I guess I, I just want to make sh clarification because we have sixty-one thousand eight hundred dollars left over from this contract, right? And and about thirteen thousand was going to be used to finish up the Nunez stuff, right? Yes. Twenty-four thousand for tie and bond, and then we still have twenty-three thousand towards paving and the detail costs. Right? No, we have, to, well, paving and the detail costs. There's also the cost for an asbestos pipe. Uh, the paving he's going to do under chapter 90, isn't he? Right. Paving he's doing under chapter okay. 90, but we need the estimates. Okay, yeah. so he's going to pull it out from the, that 61,000. Yes. Okay. Chris has yeah. already gone through some of that. What we were concerned about, excuse me, was the detail costs and figuring out what the paving and guardrail is going to cost. Okay, so we're pretty much going to we're pretty much on okay with we're this on stuff. track to finalize because okay. in this next payment application, these changes will be identified. But we have to do a change order to to memorialize. Okay, so so you want us to make a motion to um, allow you to do the change order so we can keep as close a timeline as possible. Well, to sign contracts based yeah. on these MVP projects, because mm -hmm. we need, when they're ha when you have changes in the contracts, you need somebody who can immediately exec it, execute. And so yeah. we've had some situations in the past where it's been difficult to do that. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I just wanted, amenable. if the board is amenable to it, yes. um, I generally sure. share contract changes with you. Right. No, yeah. I'm fine with it. So I'll make that motion. Uh, I'll second that. Thank you. Is there any further discussion on this? Because we really want this to move along. All right. Yep. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, Casey. So I feel more comfortable about that. Um, all right. So that's the wrap up on Keller Drive. How about Town, town Common? Okay. So I've been, um, I've been working with the town common ad hoc committee and with um, Berkshire Design, Jeff Squire on kind of nailing down final design and cost estimates. Um, I talked to Jeff this week. We, you know, he's he's putting together final numbers. We're probably, you know, rough budget is somewhere between 250 and 300 if we wanted to do the whole uh, project. I'll share my screen for a second here just to kind of give a quick idea of um, what the common design looks like at the moment. This is kind of fairly rough because, you know, this was just in, in one of our meetings. There's a lot more that needs to kind of come out of this. But um, as people notice, we've kind of pulled the sidewalk away from in between cars. Uh, this is going over to Cheslick's over here. We're moving it down further to the, to the end of the sidewalk um, area and kind of giving people a pathway over to kind of the dentist office. Again, pulling it out of the between car parking lots. Um, we would reposition the memorials and I've been working with uh, John Sis and, and the, I'm, I'm getting in touch with the VFW to talk about processes of how we would move those monuments and you know ceremonies respect for them all that kind of thing. Um, 
but as you notice, like there, there's no, the crosswalks onto this common are not, um, they're non-existent really. Uh, there's no way to you come onto just a piece of grass here. So the idea is to kind of get, um, you'd have some ballards here for protection. You'd have a walkway through. Um, you have a much bigger walkway around the common and seating areas, walkways over and crosswalks over to Grave Street and then over to kind of um, Cumberland Farms and the, the, the stores on this side of the road. Obviously, we'll have our main crosswalk here. You know, we're not sure all this will happen, but this is in design. Um, the design is to make the, the, the fountain safer and walkways more, more places for people to sit enjoy their time. We do hold functions there like Veterans Day and Memorial Day and, and you know, different events where we'll, you know, it's very difficult to walk on that. The, the pathways that are there are designed for, you know, a hundred years ago and the buildings that they went to are no longer there. Um, so there's a lot of change. And we talked about, you know, irrigation to, um, you know, right now it's the women's club who really takes care of this common. And you know, they're, they're lugging, you know, water bottles to kind of water flowers, the perennials they put in. And, and we have a dedicated water source already. So the whole idea is to kind of hook it up to an automatic, you know, sprinkler system that would water the vegetation here. So, we, you know, we would invest and maintain our investment. Um, and then, you know, um, and ju just a nice safer path for people to kind of uh, congregate. Uh, people will notice that this common got a little bit larger. You know, the town common owned more into Sugarloaf Street than, than we're actually using. So we thought, why not take a, you know, a little bit more space there and use that up. And in this dotted line here, the common kind of <laughs> spills out onto the street more than it should have. It's just, you know, just the way things were back in the day and kind of where things wound up but um, this is a, just an initial design we're going through that process now we're trying to we're trying to work with um, and I've been we've talked earlier in, in, in other meetings I'm trying to work with Berkshire design to, to be our engineer to kind of pull a whole master plan together of as we just talked about with the sidewalks um, the bike lanes and all a whole master plan to kind of tie all this in together so when you walk across the sidewalk in one part of the town, it kind of looks similar to the other part of the town. Just to get some consistency, we'd love to redo Elm Street. So that all looks, you know, fresh and new and welcoming. So people come to town, park their vehicles in the in a new Leary lot, go and enjoy our restaurants and um, walk around to shops in our town. And, and hopefully that would drive more economic development, more people, you know, to town and more shops to town. So there's a lot happening, but that's just a quick, quick view. And I'll, I'll stop the share now. Um, so hopefully in um, in a couple of weeks or so, we'll we'll hear from Berkshire Design. They'll they'll do a presentation to our board, and then we we would like to bring it to the select board and do a public hearing. You know, just get people's thoughts. What does this look like? Do you like it? What would you change? You know, that kind of thing. So we've been working on this for years. Jane Trajer started it um, many years ago, and uh, we're just kind of keeping the ball rolling. And eventually, we'll get some nice sidewalks and a nice common. Thank you, Trevor. I think everyone's excited and really waiting yeah. for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next item on the agenda is a zoning amendment change. Um, did uh, Trevor and David, yeah. did you have a chance to look at this? Yes, I, I have. Um, and I think it, 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 um, it warranted good discussion, I think. And, you know, really, we have a lot of projects in, that are coming up in town and things that we would like to do. Um, you know, the zoning, zoning laws don't always keep up with kind of the projects that, that you are working on. And um, I think, you know, cer certain zoning criteria in one area doesn't quite fit in another area. Um, meaning like for municipal projects, we have a senior center that we'd like to get moving on. We have a church we own. We have the library that needs, you know, it's waiting in line to figure out what we're going to do um, and what they're going to get for um, where they are in the key and what that design is going to look like. It's been, you know, several years since that initial work had been done. So we really want to see, does that still fit our needs? And what, a, you know, what are the setbacks that we need? Um, what kind of frontage do you need to have? You know, there's, you, you know, we're, we're looking at the park uh, project up at the other end of the road. That's going to need, um, we're going to need to um, go to town meeting and, and, and get some, um, adjust our zoning so that municipal projects maybe 
you know, ha have a little more leeway to get a, get a park in a specific piece of land where, you know, it might be different if you were putting a, um, you know, a concrete crushing plant versus, versus a town park. You know, there's two different kind oh. of Aspects. Don't forget the um, don't forget Cumberland Farms because that's another. Well, yeah, that's that's another thing. You know, so the question really is, <clears throat> we're the select board will ask um, planning board and will ask town meeting for an adjustment to our zoning to um, to um, omit some of the, some of the requirements for municipal projects in town. And we think about um, you know the dimensional table, um, how much frontage do you need for specific project and what kind of setbacks we are going to want. And I think, you know, you have setbacks to protect your neighbors um, and, you know, to make sure you're not putting a wastewater treatment plant right in the middle of a, of a neighborhood where it's, you know, it's not particularly needed, could be sited somewhere else, but you have to deal with the setbacks on a project. And those might be different. Say if we, if we decide to, you know, Cumberland Farms is an eyesore for the center of town right now. It's a disaster. And so if, if the town decided to take that over, force them to move the tanks, put a pocket park in there or um, find another way to develop it for economic development, what, um, what kind of setback would you have on that property versus another piece of property out in a larger area where you have a lot more room? You know, it's such a tight spot. I don't know what the, you know, what we're going to want to request for setbacks depending on where, where you're going to be. And I think there's, you know, we'd still go through site plan review on a lot of our projects, but we do, I think municipalities need a little more flexibility than, um, than other projects. And I think, um, I think we, we should, we should look at what other towns do. There's many towns in the state and of course, all over the country that have different ways that they go about. I think Casey was mentioning there's, there's many towns that, um, that exempt municipalities from certain setbacks or certain requirements of the zoning laws. And um, I think we need a healthy discussion. I'm hoping to start that now and about what, what we need and what we will require to get our projects completed um, in the best interest of the residents and the taxpayers. And then um, I think we, we do need to think about what other what other communities do, what works good in other communities, what would work good for Deerfield and in certain areas of Deerfield. So um, zoning has never been my super strong point. <laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a land use attorney, but I think um, it, it's worth uh, looking at this and coming up with a good um, request to town meeting to make sure that our projects can move forward. Uh, and I agree, the, um, the other thing that, you know, it's been in the back of my mind for a while is a way to access the what we call the Braven Road property for senior housing uh, how we can access this from North Main Street yep. by having the leeway that we're talking about with this municipal zoning we can get a right away from Main Street out back to mm -hmm. that uh, right. may you know and it probably will uh, require us to be buying a parcel on North Main Street at some point in time Yes, if anything ever comes up to give us that access, yeah. I think it's important to have that yeah. that access. Yep. So the consensus would be to move this on to the planning board for a public hearing. Is that yeah. how yeah. hearing? Yeah. Casey, well, do you want us to do um, a formal vote or we can just move it on? Well, the, I one, think my question is, is do you have a preference on which one you want to move ahead? That's true. That's there, one thing that you should tell the, the right. planning board. And so the the uh, the question, you know, uh, town council gave gave us several options, you know, right. to ask uh, for exemption from municipal properties from the dimensional table of the zoning, um, you know, with a fifty foot setback, with no setback, with twenty five foot setback. I think, you know, I think if you're looking at, you know, I would recommend like a twenty or twenty five foot setback, right? Um, but you look at do, doing something at the, uh, say we took over the, you know, or purchased the Cumberland Farms project, setbacks wouldn't work there. I mean, and you look at Springfield or New York City, like the, you know, the buildings are right next to each other. So it's, you know, there, uh, there are certain areas where setbacks don't really make any sense and, and others, uh, they do. So, um, you know, you always want to be respectful of your neighbors and, and uh, you know, we are 
we are the residents. The town is the residents of Deerfield. So we we care deeply about you know people's thoughts. But we also st still need to move projects forward for the betterment of everybody in town and not just anyone who's right next to it. So you have to weigh those things and make a, um, a an honest um, argument of your points to the residents of Deerfield and make sure that they you know, see if they will go along with your vision for the town and what you'd like to bring to the residents. Um, so I think, you know, I think, uh, I, so I'm a little bit unsure what to ask for. And I, I wanted to just maybe a little bit more time to think about and research what other communities are doing and how are they making their projects? Is there a way to do a you know, should we? Well, we have to move something, Trevor. We have to move something forward for so the. So, should it have well, no setbacks or should it have some? I mean, I, I don't really know what to do. I mean, I guess uh, we could always ask for, or maybe somebody knows this better than me and I'll stop talking so that somebody can answer. But what would you, what would we do with the Cumberland Farms area versus, say, a town park or the library project? Well, for Cumberland Farms, the, the situation is, you know, the library needs a temporary, if we go forward with the library project, they have to keep the library running. So the idea would be to take over Cumberland Farms, put the library temporarily in Cumberland Farms with minimal investment, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And and then at the end, we would turn around and sell it. It's right. already a pre-existing building. So- okay. I, I don't think we have to worry about setbacks because setbacks would only be for new structures. Right. Um, so uh, the Cumberland Farms thing is really a, an issue for this. So, I okay. mean, I'm okay with some setback because yeah. um, I think we have to, we, you know, you have to be mindful of, of your neighborhood, no matter- I, I agree, who you I agree are. completely. So yep. I'm, I'm sort of like supportive of, of a, of not the 50 foot one because we we're we're downtown yeah. in the village right and we want to be able to do, have some ability to um do our projects that we have mm -hmm. in mind but i think some setback is okay i mean how do you feel yeah. dave well i i think if we establish a setback we're going to put ourselves in a pigeonhole and i think we should have it on a case-by-case -case basis uh, because Cumberland Farm setback is going to be a lot different than setback for the senior center or uh, something else in town. So, um, you know, we're going to have public hearings on all this stuff yeah. before we move forward. So, you know, and here again, I just think a case by case is more than say, you know, if we came out with 25 feet, we want to do something with Cumberland, then we look at it and we say, wait a minute, the only thing you can do is put an old uh, little ice cream stand right in the center of the property and that's it. Right. Oh, so so what you're you're advocating, no no setback. No specific setback case and by case. Each 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 setback be determined by the project going forward into the site plan review. Yes. I'm mean, actually I mean that makes sense. Uh, Casey's got her hand Casey, up. Yeah. What are your thoughts? My question is, is, does that more fit into the principal use option, which is the second option in the packet on this particular page? I, I, I believe that would working. seem what David just described seems to fit that. And I'm not an attorney. So, I, you know, I look at these, they all look the same to me. So I'm reading the language like, what? I, it's, yeah, it's uh, notes or principal use, or I, I don't know what this means. So somebody needs to help me with that. So maybe before you push it to the planning board, um, maybe Lisa or, or Adam could give us a you know a quick. Well, I'm just thinking, Casey. We're meeting tomorrow with Lisa, right? For um, yes, but she's got to be off by ten. Uh, let me ask her. Let me send well, her an email and see her, how yeah. she thinks we should just. Just to let me just send her an email. Let's you. see what Jennifer has to say. <laughs> hey, Jen. She's done this more than me. Hi. Um, I think what it means is depending on what use you want on what property. Right. And that would determine the setback that you're going to put there. Because, like, let's say you demolish the, just using the example of the Cumberland Farms building, you demolish yeah. that building, but you want to move something closer to the street and have it 
go taller right. or match the building that's next to it. Yeah. Um, that would change and it would be, it would depend on what that use was for that building and on that parcel. Is that what, is that what principal use means? Right. Okay. So like, let's say you're going to have, um, um, that it's going to be a park, but not, uh, like a business i don't you know then it could it it would it would change i can't think of something like a like if it was manufacturing or if it was going to be a well the old putman block that used to sit there where cumberland farms is there was no setback right yeah because it was yeah. you know it's right in the middle of town yeah it was right in the middle of town it was like a really expensive hardware store right so what about you know but but Article two has a 50 foot, you know, setback. That's so, a 50 foot frontage. So that was going to be my question. So oh, frontage and setback yeah. are different. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And yeah. so, so that's what I, I think we're confusing those terms and yeah, that's what that, I'm concerned about. That helps. That yeah. helps me uh, a, a little bit further. So I think. Um, frontage is no issue with Cumberland Farms property. Right. Yeah, there's tons of frontage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But if we were to do something with the rural lot, for instance, frontage might be an issue. Yeah. Uh, no, the rural with lot is more lot? than enough frontage. Which lot is that? The rural lot the rural is lot. all the way the end of North Main Street near 5 and 10. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. Trevor, we've see. owned it for years. Yeah, that's yeah. the peninsula there, right? Yeah. 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 But you've got frontage on both 5 right. and 10 and on North Main Street. So there's yeah. plenty of frontage. Right. I, I think we're really talking about pushing forward number two, but yeah, okay. Um, let's verify it with Lisa tomorrow, Casey. Yeah, can you? I, was I can verify two. that. It seems to me principal use fits more with what the intent would be while right. the town remains subject to other portions of the bylaw because yeah, you know, I've mentioned to you it to you individually. I think one thing that the town can should be mindful of is that yes the town facilities serve a, a certain purpose but oftentimes we want to be part of a public information yes um process so that people can chime in Absolutely. and understand that Absolutely. you know there there's this back and forth that goes on with any facility yeah so it, it's sort it's of a, a less over overarching it's a town right. facility so it it's part of a, a bigger process absolutely yeah. absolutely okay so i think we're talking about number two and okay. I, i'll just verify that and and yeah so then casey can get back to you trevor and you dave yeah really after we uh, just verify okay. it tomorrow okay that's okay. all right That'd be so good. number two okay i yeah. do you want to take a vote pending um council's confirmation on sure. principal use I'll make yeah. that I'll make that motion. Dave Wolf from second. Okay. Okay. So if I'll, there's no further discussion, all those in favor. I Trevor McDaniel. I Dave Wolfram. I Carolyn Ness. Okay. Listen, I'm really sorry. We're getting really late here. Well, just um, just again, uh, just to and I'd like to revise that our, our that second section because there's there's the 50 foot frontage and then on the back side uh, on the end of that properties are located 50 feet away from lot lines. So uh, any structure to be 50 feet away from lot lines. So that doesn't quite work in every location. So maybe right. um, that that's the one thing that I'd like looked at, you know, I, I don't mind some front, some setback. Yes, but, you're uh, right. You're right. Um, so not not in wholesale. So just I'd love a discussion, or you have a discussion with um, our attorneys to talk about that. All right, but well, we uh, we are gonna um, we'll sort sort that out. Yeah, and then it's gonna be moved on to the planning board because we need right. to we need to have it to their April meeting to keep yep. with the time frame of um, town meeting. Yep. Town meeting. Okay. okay. Yep. The wetlands would come in the site plan review anyways. Yes, it would. Right. Yep. That comes exactly. and that and that's also subject to the conservation commission. Conservation yeah, right. commission. Yep. 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 Good. We would still go through site plan review. We still have to go through conservation commission. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. right. Thank you. Move, moving on. Um COVID updates, reopening plans. Um, I know uh the library in and uh Susie Antonellis with the sports programs are moving forward. 
but I, I guess I just wanna make sure people are understanding that the vaccine is still not available. Um, we had very short, um, a, a shortage, hardly being able to cover our second doses this week. Right. Uh, but it, it will be coming forward. It will be moving um, at some point in the next month, we'll have more vaccine. We're struggling very hard and trying to sort out how we take from the state system, which is public private. Charlie Baker decided not to use the pre-existing um, emergency plans that we've had since 9-11. I just um, think that's crazy. I want to add, yeah. I just want to add my voice how frustrating it Keep is. I just while we have the while we have the floor here in a public meeting to say how angry and Yes. Uh, demoralizing it is to give up weekends and nights and trainings and books and uh, you know plans and walkthroughs and all the things that we have given up of our personal time to serve our residents in the act of uh, select board and board of health to come up with an emergency dispensing plan and site not only one plan i think we have five different plans seven seven and seven and we practice every time there's a flu clinic we say let's get a flu clinic together so we can practice if there's ever we need to do mass vaccinations we have the volunteers we have the know-how we have the plans all ready to go and what happens a massive vaccination is needed and the state decides, uh, Charlie Baker or Mass Department of Public Health, somebody decides, nah, we're not gonna, we're not gonna do any of the things that we've trained for for 15 years and spent tons of money on and have all these volunteers ready to go. We're gonna just, uh, we'll send it to CVS. CVS, we'll, we'll pay CVS to remodel their stores so that they can do you know, they can do it instead of all the volunteers who do it for nothing. I mean, I just, I can't be more frustrated and embarrassed yeah. for, for so, government waste. I know it is very frustrating, but I'm hoping that um, when the vaccine becomes available, we will be able to access our, um, you know, plans and, and be able to do the industrial park two or three weekends in a row and have the opportunity to do our community. So all the volunteers that have been hanging in there and then signing up and have been wonderful. Yeah. We're going to use, don't worry. So um, I just want to make sure that people understand that we are working hard and trying to sort it out. We have a, a resilient number of, of cases the it is the low level low level cases in Deerfield and in the county and it's really really important that people still wear their mask even though you're getting vaccinated we have to do this it, the vir, uh, variants are not being um, addressed and so please be safe okay yeah. that's what time do you want to say tomorrow morning um about nine about eight thirty quarter nine Dave okay what's happening tomorrow morning we we have our second clinic second shots oh right thank Thursday you same friday I will, I will, i'll be gone but um okay yeah don't don't worry great. no it they got it under control great to have um, whoever can show up thank you guys you're for going be both days thank you oh, very much oh, guys. Dave, thank really you. appreciate it thank you it's really helpful because i'm i gotta run over um to to meet with lisa and um casey yep for a little at nine o'clock so it'll yep. be wonderful to know that you're there thank yep. you thank you okay um, okay okay um next item on the agenda casey you want to go down with the roof loan document okay so the explanation of the roof loan is thus we're refinancing the school roof loan the balance due right now is four hundred twenty six thousand four hundred eighty six wait 426 <laughs> i can't say this out loud today <laughs> it's too big a number. all i know is the rate it's, is phenomenal the rate is phenomenal phenomenal so what we're doing is we're refinancing the ban the bond anticipation note for the school roof right now the balance is four hundred twenty six thousand four hundred eighty six dollars the annual pay down is a hundred thousand with any donations up to 25,000. So you're subtracting the 100 and the 25, which would give us a new finance amount of 301, 486 and 486. 
$301,486, gotta think. And so the loan term is a year. Greenfield Co-op, this has gone out to bid using our financial advisor's guidance. Greenfield Co-op won the bid again with five total bidders and the bids ranging between 0 0.40 to 0 0.55%. 0 0.40? So, yes. So the interest rate happy. that was identified as the low bidder in this, in this process was 0.40%. Wow. Awesome. I mean, That's it's like a thousand bucks. She's right. It's amazing. It's about a thousand bucks of interest. I mean, versus it's last year, it's $1,202.59. It's incredible. That's an amazing rate. Yes. So compared to last year's ban for the same project at 1.19%, which was a great and rate. the total interest paid on that ban was five thousand sixty one dollars and fifty nine so it's a significant decrease in cost and basically what the board needs to do is to vote to approve the loan documents and sign at their convenience yep. and those documents are being held by barbara um, for purposes of protection of the documents yeah they need to be signed within two days and so, in front of Barbara, yeah. And in front of Barbara. So what needs to happen is everybody needs to cycle into the office during when Barbara's there um, and sign those pages. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a motion to, to sign and approve the loan documents uh, for the school roof. Dave okay, Wolfram, second. Okay, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Um, so Casey, they wouldn't give us multiple years at the same interest. I know. I was just looking at other projects we could yeah. do. <laughs> Jen? Fund anticipation notes are only a year, though. I know. If, um, if Carolyn and Dave are both going to be volunteering tomorrow, Barbara's also volunteering. And so oh, yeah. she could she bring did. the papers with her and you could sign them there if that would be easier. It's a great idea. That's a great That's idea, Jennifer. Perfect. Yep. perfect idea. Because I was going to, uh, or it, it, I can run it, down to the town hall. If she um, if she's coming to the town hall before she goes there, I'm not sure if she's going directly. Yep. Um, if not, we can shoot down not, here. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I would also make a motion to sign the election warrant. Dave Wolf, no second. At your earliest convenience. At your earliest convenience. Yep. All right. If there are no further discussion on that one, all those in favor. All right, Trevor McDaniel. All right, Dave Wolf. Carolyn Ness. We're opening the. Yeah, we need to open the warrant. So you need to open the town early? meeting warrant for articles to be submitted for consideration. Isn't that early or no? No. Not considering that we're usually you give it a, a few weeks. Yeah, it just seems um, early. Now we already have some placeholder articles that this would yeah. open. That's fine. No, I, I have no issue with it. I just just thought it was early, but okay, great. Yeah, it is. It is early for a June meeting, but yeah, but that's fine. We can also close it. Yeah, we can close it early. Right. And you can always open it again if you need yeah. to. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm fine. It just hit my radar because normally in March yeah. we're actually closing. Right. The warrant. Yeah. So it occurred to me that we should probably open it. Yeah. No. It's, okay. It gives us time to get our get our. I make a, I make a motion to open the annual town meeting warrant. I'll second that motion. Um, okay, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness, okay. Do you want Trevor, to do you want to talk this? about sure. the um, non-compliance? So, yeah, so um, we had a letter of non-compliance from um, DEP at our, at our plants and we knew this was coming and we have been working on this. Um, we've had several letters before and they, they actually kind of help us with our, um, you know, with our uh, applying for grants and loans. Um, I mean, not that we want them, but it, everybody knows that the plants are in tough shape, um, so, but all of them have been addressed and this letter will go through and dic you know, we'll, we'll kind of explain what, what uh, D, um, Dave Prickett engineering has done to help us through these. He's been talking with, um, Dan uh, Karpaska at DEP about our projects and you know really Dan just wanted to know okay so what's happening 
you know, and, and where are you at with all of this? And it really explains that we have, um, you know, we've done the assessment, the whole project assessment. We're still in the, in the process of doing the cameraing of all the pipes, but, uh, you know, to, to talk about our I and I, how much that's infiltration of water getting into our system um, that shouldn't be in there. Um, there was discussion of the clarifier. We fixed the clarifier. Um, there's, you know, and the other items that have gone through here. So this is really just a letter answering that letter back to him as we need to do. Um, and I think they're they're good with everything. Uh, so, I mean, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five, like seven items on here. And um, it, these are just talking about our implementation. We fixed the secondary clarifier. We're, uh, we're bidding right now. Our bids, um, our sub bids came in this week. Um, just to kind of update, do you want to give an update on that a little bit? So, um, so the sub bids came in. Uh, our bids uh, for for the phase one project at the South Deerfield plant, our um, large bid for the whole project, encompassing those bids, will be opened on the thirty first of March. I think Casey's set to to meet with them and kind of open up the bids and see where you know see where everything shook out. Um, there's only one item that. Um, we only got one bid on in the sub bids and that was HVAC. Just, there are so many, as I, I talked about this with the schools the other night in our capital meeting that there are so many, um, there's so much HVAC work right now. It's very, you know, they, none of them need a job. So it's, uh, we did get a bid and it was, um, it, so we have one bid through one of the contractors that's bidding. And then an, I think we got one other bid, but it was, um, we just, we just, one of them you can't use because it's already encompassed. The other bid, we just felt like it was better off to um, pull that out and, and um, ask the contractor to kind of include that bid and we can go out and ask for other bids. Some, some um, HVAC guys didn't want to go through all the major paperwork to have to do the sub bid, but they would probably come back and bid it, you know, more straightforward without all that extra work. So, um, that's kind of what we're doing for the HVAC. Uh, so the, the other bids for the big project are coming due and I'm really excited about that as we work on the other projects coming forward. Um, so this answers, this really answers, uh, this letter answers DEP for all the things we're doing. I think they're, they're fine with that. So it's the wastewater uh, treatment phase one, phase two is going to be in planning as well. And then the old Deerfield pump station force main evaluation. That's a project that's going on right now to figure out if we can close down the old Deerfield plant and pump it, pump the, uh, turn that into a pump station and maybe add one other pump station and do a force main to South Deerfield plant to get all the, uh, in four years or so, the South Deerfield plant will be ready to go and could take all of that. Uh, so we wouldn't have you know, 50 years of maintenance up there at the old Deerfield plant, we could just pump it down to our new and improved South Deerfield plant. Um, and then the collection system, CMOM, which is all the camera work that's going through. And just to kind of let you know, we've got an immense amount of work. Our infrastructure, mostly up in the north end of town, there's other areas too, it's old. I mean, we all know that our, our collection systems means the piping We've got some major work that's going to have to be done um, in in Old Deerfield. Um, so I'll get back to you a little bit more on that. But some of the camera work we have found, we kind of our jaw dropped. You know, there's just some major work that's coming up, and uh, I will get get back to you all on that within a week. I'll have more information in about a week, and then the I and I report is done. So that just kind of answers all those items. Uh, yeah, Trevor will be back with us with more depressing information. I'm sorry. Sorry, but like, it has to be done. Like, you can't not do it. So. I mean, the pipes, the pipe, the clay pipes are disintegrating. There's nothing it's we bad. can do. It's bad. It's real. That bad. Bad. So, yes, we have. That's stuff. why Kevin's up at one in the morning. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I passed him on the road the other day and yeah. I gave him a smile and he didn't smile back. And I'm like, oh, then I called him. I'm like, are you okay? And he's like, I'm going to another sewer problem. Like it's constant. It's constant. And, it um, and these are these are major issues. I mean, this is major pipe in infrastructure that is like Swiss cheese. And so we knew it was coming, but um, but it's it's not fun when you we didn't know it was going to be this big and this yeah. fast. <laughs> so and this fast. 
yeah, I'll be back in touch in about in, in less than a week with with how much that's going to cost us and what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. Um, Casey, just be ready to, to um, try to, we might have to have an emergency meeting, okay? Can you post? Dave is checking in with USDA, he had a good meeting with them today. They are looking for projects, so I think we might be able to get some grant uh, help again from USDA, which yeah. is what, I mean, anything is beneficial and I think it'll be a, a, a pretty good size, you know. We need, we need to, we need to be infrastructure ready though, because yeah. this, this is yep. beyond us now. <laughs> And that's that's what brings me. There's a conversation that we should probably have about how we fit in what we what we're finding for major issues in the old Deerfield infrastructure system yep. into what you guys already have for a plan. Because I did I walked into your plan. I You're right. I wasn't I can here get for its inception. And it yeah. sounds to me, based on the bad news I get from Kevin every day, that <laughs> We may need to, and I think Trevor's already asked Dave Prick at this, but we may yep. need to consider reevaluating some yep. of some of the the approach. Yep. If these yep. If this infrastructure really needs to be replaced sooner rather than later. Yep. Yep. For Am sure. I getting that right, Trevor? Yeah, you are. You are for sure. Yeah, and uh, James is working on some finance, and uh, Dave and Kevin have been working on the camera work. Uh, to really get a good assessment. And really what we're talking about is coming down Pine Nook. That's a steep run, you know, out of, out of, there's not a lot of buildings served. I mean, there's a there's Eagle Brook, which is huge, right? But that, that comes down the hill, but there's not a lot of houses up there, you know, versus the other pipe that's in really bad shape takes all of Deerfield Academy and all of, all of old Deerfield. It's everything comes into that one pipe that goes into our facility and runs along the river and it's in it's in real bad shape when they, they couldn't even get the camera down it and um it's undersized it's old it's full of holes it's yeah we're we're and we and that's critical because if that backs up we're in we're in a world of hurt that, so, that's the one that we got the hazardous mitigation grant for for eight hundred thousand dollars and we you're had right to get money back yep. because we didn't our hazardous mitigation plan was two years in the queue at FEMA. Yep. And we, so much work went into that. I mean, I, I took my old textbooks out to do, do the an economic analysis on that. I mean, yep. you remember that, Casey. Yeah, those before my care. time. I know that. Oh you guys worked There's hard so on many, it. So many hours invested in that. I had to give it all back. For a grant. We got the grant and then we had to give the money back because we didn't have time to go out to bid and get it implemented oh. before the, the money, the you know, time ran right. out. The whole thing just, it that's sucks. what I, drives me crazy about government. <clears throat> I know, well, it was bad. <laughs> and yet you are a government. Yes, I am. We I'm are upset with myself. Good government. You're, you're not the only one that gets upset about that. <laughs> All right, we need to move on, you guys. Okay, um, yep. Keep okay. Going. So um, what we're going to do is we need to vote for continued um, technical assistance related to COVID-19. Um, oh, Casey yeah. well, was- Wait, wait, can I- do we oh. need to take a vote on the DP, yes. uh, DPC letter? Okay, so I would make a motion to approve the- um, so, oh, Sorry about that. Yep, no, that's okay. The, the, um, our response back to the uh, notice of non-compliance enforcement number 00010529. Dave Wolf, as of March 9th. As okay. of March 9th, yep, thank you. Uh, okay, as, if there's no other further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. I Carolyn Ness. Okay. Thank you. So, Thank you. Um, moving on, Casey. I saw that email that you sent on the. Um, it looks like a million four is what we're we're getting. It does, but it's Possibly. an estimate, and we're still yeah. wait. I was just on a call about this yesterday, and Jeff Kravitz and I talked about it again this afternoon. So we're still waiting for a lot of guidance from the feds. We don't yeah. know that that number is going to be the final number. So I very much well, hesitate if, to say we're going to yeah. get it, but. It's going to be tranches of money too, yeah. right? But but it was clear to me that we were in, you know, it looked like We're getting money, million two and a million four, and this is a little <laughs> over a million four. So, mm -hmm. um, I think it's very clear that we have no issue paying twenty five hundred dollars to continue technical yes. support. We for, still have some money in our CAT, CARES Act as well, so it's for right. both Alex to support our meeting, um, meeting and. Um, some of the uh, attendant tasks around meetings yep. and for the technical assistance to deal with the FEMA 
and some of these other reporting requirements, particularly FEMA, by okay. um, Mr. Stefan. Yep. Okay, I that's totally fine. I, I, I want to make that a motion because there's it's clear. Okay. This is clear. Yeah. So it would be to continue their technical assistance activities retroactively. So this the reason I'm saying retroactively is because in January, the CARES Act and FEMA were extended for another year. Yep. And we didn't, we had that cutoff date of December 30th for quite some time. So if yep. you could retroactively approve it as of January 1st to June 30th, 2021, okay. that way we keep it in one fiscal year. I amend my motion to um, uh, make it retroactive from December 31st to June 30th. Thank you. Dave Wolfram second it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Wonderful. Okay. Thanks for fixing my request, Carolyn. <laughs> no, no, this is great. We you got the well, date right. I got the date wrong. <laughs> no. We need to pay attention and make sure that you and Jennifer. Yeah. Um, bundled NOI. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit, Casey? So this is a contract for approval and signature at the select board's convenience or through allowing me to sign it. It's up to what whatever you guys wanna do. But this is a contract to complete what they call bundled uh, notice of intent work that would allow the public works department to maintain our current, um, what do you call those? I, I don't wanna say is, culverts because they're not culverts. It's but like a ditch. It's ditching, it's ditching. It's ditch lines and stuff. Is that what yeah. that is? Yeah. Well. Since 1985, the Food Security Act, no ditches have been maintained in the town of Deerfield. So the idea is ditches along the roads, ditches, you know, along public ways. Um, we we will structures. water drainage structures. We are trying to um, uh, put together a plan that will allow us to do annual maintenance and debris removal. Mm -hmm. And this is not cleaning out the bloody brook. Right. However. I know people have been asking and people have been talking about this. You still are allowed to go out and just in your own backyard, remove branches, stuff like that. And what On we your are property. going to do is put this bundled NOI, get this approved by the Conservation Commission. And then what we're doing is under the Mosquito um, District, which we are a member, you're public health regulations um, help you, uh, you're, not, you're not exempt from all wetlands regulations, but you're exempt from um, the majority of them. And that would allow us to do some work on Bloody Brook. That is not ditching, but that is allowing us to do some, some work. So between neighborhoods uh, and neighbors and people doing their own little backyard work, we're hoping that we can do some more along the bloody brook, but this is not like ditched cleaning completely. So we just, to make that clear. Okay. And so the contract is actually for the engineering work to develop that bundled NOI. And we had, we have a contract estimate of $5,000 from time bond. Isn't that correct? Or something like no, that? No, it's a little bit more than that. Okay. I just don't, hold on. I want to say it's 7,900, but more than what we had estimated. 7,800. Yeah. Okay. It's more than we estimated, but it's still reasonable. So, I, I mean, I would make that motion to support this because this is the first step in trying to get this straightened out. I'll second that. Okay. Thank you. Is there any further discussion or clarification on this? All right. Thank you. Like I said, this is the first step in trying to get this sorted out. So thank you. All those in favor? Dave Wolf and I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Okay. Um, Trevor, do you want to talk about the visioning plan for South Deerfield Center? Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to share a screen here a second, if I can. Let me, uh, won't take too long, I don't think. Um, so uh, I've, been trying to engage, and I've, I've talked about this for maybe a month now, um, of uh, getting Berkshire Design to help us a little bit with a visioning um, plan for kind of 
pulling all of our projects together in, in the Deerfield downtown area. Um, I walked Jeff around. I, I mentioned this at a meeting before too, but I walked him around and kind of talked to him about the different projects that were going on. And I'll, I'll just read this quickly because I think it's important to to hear. I'll try to go through this fast. Uh, the Berkshire Design Group is pleased to submit a proposal for providing master planning services related to the redevelopment of the South, Del South Deerfield downtown area. We understand that the town of Deerfield has had several studies and design projects developed for specific areas of downtown over the past several years. These include such things as proposed Leary lot parking, complete street improvement with assistance from Mass DOT, tree, tree box filters, and the Deerfield Common project currently under design with with um, Berkshire Design. Um, despite the range of readiness of those projects, we understand there's a lack of overall coordination and vision for how those individual projects contribute to a new vision for downtown. Our scope of services for this project involves the development of a comprehensive master plan for downtown area, which considers the various other projects discussed above. The master plan will focus primarily on the immediate downtown area and blocks created by Elm Street, Railroad Street, the Town Common, Sugarloaf Street, Park Street. The plan will include an emphasis on pedestrian connections, streetscape improvement, such as benches and seating areas with focus on providing new outdoor amenities and revitalizing the downtown business district. We understand this master planning process will require the input of several stakeholders, including business owners, town officials, residents, and potential, potentially mass DOT, among others. As part of this proposal, we are including up to four meetings with the town to discuss overall objectives and project goals, as well as identify potential opportunities to take in, into consideration. Based upon our discussion, we anticipate the following scope of services. Existing uh, conditions assessment, review all the plans previously prepared for, uh, for the project area, visit the site and photograph and document existing conditions, prepare existing conditions, uh, base sheet illustrating constraints and opportunities, meet with town representatives to gain introduction to the project and uh, understand vision, preliminary visioning, develop two to three preliminary options for the project area showing major connections and elements, meet with the town representatives to review options and determine next steps, redefinition, uh, oh, refinement of vision, respond to comments from the town with modifications to the plan, meet with the town to review the options and discuss final revisions, prepare final referred plan based on the, uh, based upon direction of the town, public engagement, develop plans for a public meeting, attend public meeting one, revise the plans from the first meeting and attend a second meeting. The schedule, uh, we can start work as soon as notice proceed, um, you know, and complete the process during the spring and early summer. That may get pushed back a little bit, depending on what we're doing. So the fees um, for, for, for this work is around $10,000. Um, you know, some clarifications. The fee uh, makes the following assumptions that all base plans will be prepared using mass GIS, existing survey data and other available uh, public information. No existing condition survey is included. So that means like if we wanna have them survey everything that obviously costs more. And this is really a starting point because this is an initial kind of visioning of, of the project. When we get into redesigning all of these other things, there's obviously engineering costs involved with that. But I think, you know, as we work with DPC for our all of our help and work on all the sewer work that we're doing, I envision we need kind of that same help for, um, for in, envisioning what our projects are gonna be downtown. We have a lot of them. You know, and we kind of need somebody that really, you know, we've worked with Ty and Bond, we've worked in EPI, we've worked with, you know, different facilities. And um, Berkshire Design is doing the track at Frontier. They're doing the common right now. I just think a, a consistent view on what our projects are and how to tie them together is important. And I think this is an important first step. Um, and then obviously, you know, we'd have to revise this based on what comes out of this and what we want to, what we want to get done. But. Trevor, um, can we make sure that um, the information from that uh, meeting on the end of our member at the, we did that um, environmental day. Uh, oh yeah, Frontier. Yeah, yeah, some kind of sort of like that big giant meeting at the end of the uh, I day. had to miss that, yep. Yep, it was really, really good. I know, it was a lot of good feedback. Of, yeah, there was really lots of notes and stuff. Yep. So I know that it's somewhere. 
we yeah, save them. no, I, I get that moving. I know they have copies based on the school, based on the common work. They have all of our work that we did with uh, Conway School of Design and the, the, uh, charrette charrette, uh, the whole the charrette. charrette. They have okay. all of that information. So they have a ton of work already. And then, you know, they've surveyed the common. And so we have quite a bit of work, but if there is other survey work, you know, I'd like to get them the information Ty and Bond did with the Leary lot and how do we want to expand or change that a little bit. And, you know, right. we, have, well, we want to, and we want to include Berkshire Brew with that. So it connects yeah. with your garden and um, potentially that's an economic project. It is. And it's how, that's how project. you get a and, mass works um, grant or something like that. Yes. You know, we can, we and, can go to these grants if we have this stuff laid out. Right, uh, but I, I want to make sure that February 29th meeting is okay. included in that. I yep. don't I don't know where that information is because that was before. I Cooper think Chris came. Curtis has it. Oh yeah, I bet he does. Yeah. Uh, yeah okay. Was, he must have something, or it's somewhere. I know yeah. it, it happened, Casey, before you came. Let's but... try to track that down. Actually, it happened right as I came because I yeah. I was there for for half of the the program. Yep. 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 But right. um, so wherever I, it is, we need that because that's the, that's the most current public meeting that we had input on. So again, this is, you know, I think because this is some, so I don't know if we can use the money we had for complete streets uh, to start this work. You know, I, I envision them saying, okay, well, where do we lay out the bike lanes? Where, you know, uh, Casey? No, I was just thinking about that. Let me talk to... Brenda about that. Yeah, please. Yep. And okay. just, and I'm not sure, you know, I mean, I don't want to go, I'd like to go ahead and vote this, but I don't want to do it until maybe we have a, a dedicated funding source. We know where we're going and maybe if it needs another week, I mean, no, we'll meet again. No, you know what we can do, Trevor, we can vote it subject to um, uh, funding. Available okay. funding. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. I just so I'll make sure a motion. You do have programs out there that have been concurrent with this right. yeah. discussion. So yep. I will make a motion to support this. Uh, it makes very much sense. Um, okay. With a subject to trying to figure out how we're going to finance it. Right. Yeah. Depending on which way we're going to do that. Go. With the source of money we're going to use. Right. Casey? So you're making a motion to support signing a contract for Berkshire Design to start this work? Yes. To start this in in fiscal twenty one, and put and and subject to available funding from fiscal yeah. twenty one, and then you know what however we want to divide it up into fiscal twenty two, because potentially we were going to go to um, the CIPC to 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 get funding for this right out of twenty two if there's no available funding in twenty one right. But and I think, yeah, to, if we can have that if, discussion but we, first. But if, but if we have money available in fiscal 21, we want to start right now. And we do have it in, in, in this account, but I just I just got to make sure that we talk with Brenda and make sure it falls into the complete streets. It falls within the parameters. Right. Those so parameters. the motion is to support contracting with Berkshire Design. What do you want yeah. me to call this? Uh, or what I, are we I calling would, this? I would call it Deerfield um, Visioning. I mean, I, I, would, I would really... Okay. Uh, I mean, that's kind of what it, it, it kind of what it is. Visioning for downtown. Um, I would, if you have another uh, name, I'm fine with that too. I don't. Yeah, we got to come up with a different name. It's well, not... it's 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 South Deerfield Master Plan, but I hate using that term because everyone thinks it's the other master plan. <laughs> right. right, it's not a master plan. I think it's to coordinate um, the separate all the development projects, such as the town common project coordination. Streets, yeah, Leary lot. For, Pleasant Street, all the all the MVP programs. Yeah, everything. we need it. We need to pull it all together. So yes. um, we'll, we'll come up with a catchy name, but whatever it is, <laughs> we need some sort of acronym, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh no. Program. Yeah. Redevelopment of South Deerfield downtown area. It's oh, it's right perfect. What, yeah. is it, what is it spelling? Yeah, but whatever. We'll come up with something. So we're we're supporting it. So yeah. I made the okay. motion. Um, was there a second? I didn't. Dave Walker, second. Okay, you, great. If, is, um, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank okay. you, guys. Um, thank you, Trevor. Um, the next item on the agenda is um, the 350th Hatfield Parade. I know we talked about it 
Um, but we didn't get I'm back. Yeah, we didn't get back officially. We, we need to figure out uh, what I drive in or what we ride in. I mean, yeah, everybody so, can jump in my car. I don't care. <laughs> you know, we don't really have a nice mini. car tractor. We'll, we'll put all kinds of balloons on it, but we, we, we're yeah. looking for some kind of vehicle. Okay, so Casey, um, can you and Jennifer let whoever it is and have feel know that the town of Deerfield Jennifer. Select Board is going to participate? Yes. But and then find out what the contact information so we can send the information out to the fire districts because they're really upset that none of our fire people have committed any oh, we got it. We got fire it. trucks or so. But yeah, yeah. It, it's just because nobody knows about it. I don't right. Know. No, we got to tell everybody and, 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 and so, get them to go. So if you could figure out the contact information, let them know that we, as the town of Deerfield, the select board is committing to be there. Yes. We'll figure out how, what we're going to do. Please, somebody donate a car for us for a couple of hours. Yeah, we need and something. Then, and Jennifer? something that we can throw some balloons on. Yes, Jennifer. Yes, so I um I emailed over to Hatfield today and I talked to Lori Banis and she gave me a, a name of their chair and I emailed you his phone number. Oh, great. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. So we'll give him a ring. Carolyn. And... I emailed it to Carolyn. Oh, okay. okay. And, oh, um... no, fine. That's fine. And I'll get it out to the, to the um, fire districts. Yep. His name yeah. is Paul Labby. Oh, okay, okay. Great. Yeah. We'd love okay. to love to get involved. In and Dick has a convertible, I think. Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. So do good. I. All right. Let's do it. Of course, I can only fit like two of you. That's okay. I can. <laughs> We'll have masks on. I'll we'll skateboard. I'll tie onto the back. Yeah. We'll yeah. have masks. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Great. great. Oh, Thank I have you. one other one other item real quick I need to raise. Um, and it's uh, I just want to drop the hint again. We need to do a, an appraisal for the property at the pickle factory. Oh um, my gosh, yes. We, we, we talked with done. um capital, I think, and finance and everybody I think is on board. So it's just a matter of getting an appraisal out there. I'm getting asked by developers, is it for sale? And what are you doing? And I know Casey's probably working on that, but it's taken. You know. Well, we do have the complication of where are we going to site all of our materials and equipment for I'll the wastewater that treatment later. and upgrade project. We're going to have to that was the that site out. we were supposed to use. Yeah, but that was dropped on us last minute. Like I've never known that. And so I, didn't, I still we, didn't know that. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Myself. The whole idea is like when we do the project, apparently we're supposed to truck all the materials and the dirt up and drop it there while that project is the closest on. site that we actually own it to is. hold those things. It is. And I think so we have other property. But I don't know where. So it's, it's a gotta, closeness it issue, be, Carolyn. It's, it is a closeness issue. It's a money thing. You can't really truck it far or else you know it's just a waste of money so uh we got to figure that out i know i think it's worth doing the Kevin. let's do the appraisal anyways because we need to know what it's worth um and then um you know that may give us an answer if it's you know not worth selling then we're going to hang on to it and it's not an issue but i think um if the i think the market is pretty good right now and um we should do an appraisal and find out what what the what the value is and then i really think we should find out who owns the field next door and you know see if that's what can, kevin was going to check yeah, into i'll see if he's going to need any traction with Justin anybody on. way we can set up a a, a short-term lease to lease a, a small section of a field you know i know they plant it but if we could you know for a year or two have a have a small section so that as we're doing this work the guys can store equipment there and you know we can put material there and then of course bring it all back to exactly the way it was before we're you know, before we were there would be awesome. I just, you know, I just don't know who to talk to about that. Well, but, I know, think Kevin, we need to, we need to work with the engineers too. Yeah. And Kevin so was, was going to talk to, I think Justin or Dave about that. Yeah. And he was going to talk to DOT as well to see if there's, you know, there's that section of um, property before the bridge. There's a, there's a big Island there, you know, and we could maybe store the, the material there but it's dot property so it may not be feasible but he was going to look at is that a possibility um we're in a pinch there it's just such a tight spot i mean the town should have when they put that in should have bought a little bit more land but that was you know uh -huh. 100 years ago so whatever um yes casey go ahead. can i ask one quick question going back 
Can we go back to something? I was looking at yep. some notes I had from a conversation I had with John Paturek. Yep. Um, I tend to bounce things off of John a lot. Sure, he's good. For um, that. So the zoning amendment. Yep. Um, so the request, the second item in the list of three choices that we were given yep. by town council was mm -hmm. to request to amend the zoning bylaws to add a superscript identified as nine, which would allow principal use of municipal facilities with frontage requirements under the dimensional requirements of chapter 179, article two, use and dimensional requirements and section 2300 entitled uses and titled dimensional requirements. Um, so pending, that's language that Lisa's already provided for us. Mm -hmm. Um, my note from John was that made sense in terms of allowing the use for zone, uh, the zoning use. Mm -hmm. um, but remember, we talked about the frontage question. Right. Um, maybe it makes sense to fall somewhere in the middle because my note from John said 20 feet. Yeah. And this says 50 feet, well, but maybe she, it's somewhere well, in the middle, know. like 30 feet. That's why yeah, we're I think she meeting. just. She just kind of threw that number out there. She it threw was, 50 in, yeah. She did, and it wasn't really meant to be anything. It was just just kind of a number it was here. A, it was a, so yeah. my question is, are you comfortable with 30 feet? Because I can take that question. I'm you know, comfortable this with is 25. The change. I, I think want, so, be, yeah, 25 at the most. 25? Because yeah. what I can do tomorrow is I can ask Lisa to confirm whether that, Yes. Yeah, the 25 piece. And right. here's the reason I'm asking is you could forward that if you agree yep. that the frontage in that description of 25 feet, but the principal use change, if you agree to push that to the planning board, yep. I can pending council's approval of the front of the, the footage, yep. Yep. the setback notification. Yep. If you agree to do that, I can send you an email that says Lisa agrees with yeah, that's without good. violating open meeting law, simply that's note fun. you note it that's out. Fun. Does yeah, that's that yeah. it, it, do you feel like there needs to be more conversation about that? I get earlier in the meeting, I got the impression yes, but then I also remember Carolyn saying that we wanted to get this before them in April. Yeah, to, yeah you have to go before April. I, I think the the setback at twenty five feet and the frontage at fifty, I feel, is probably adequate for the projects that we have coming up. I, I don't know, you know, I, I worry well, a lot. This doesn't reference a setback. This it's doesn't reference the, a setback. Yeah, it, well, it says that as long as any structure on the proper subject property are located at least 50 feet away from the lot lines of abutting residential properties, that's a setback. So you want 25 feet of setback and yep, 25 and 50, feet of frontage? No, 50 feet of frontage. I'm going to have to verify that we 50 feet is is okay for all the all the things that we want. Well, that's it, the thing. You can't put it, it forward until you have a vote that confirms yeah. what your language is. Yeah. That's I, why I'm I asking. think it I think it's 50 feet of frontage and 25 feet of setback. But See, my I note said 20 feet, but I think if you went with 30 feet, that's enough to build a road. No, it's not that. The 50 is the uh, the frontage. That's the road. But maybe 50 feet is too limited. Maybe it is. I'm just, I'm throwing it out there so, because I was thinking about it, looking at my notes. I don't know. I would, I would, um, I would. But I, before I was you, you voted, really you really need to Lisa. have nailed that down. We'll talk to Lisa so tomorrow. So what I'll do is I will ask vote. Lisa, I think you're going to have to wait because you need to nail that down in a vote. And we'll find just, another meeting. Just call it to by the principal use and not put any footage anywhere. That might not fly at town meeting. Yeah. Because well, we require frontage and setback for other purposes. Yeah. But, with, but that would be submitted with the site plan review. What, right, but what we're, we're, we're actually do. saying we're going to be subject to these rules of frontage and setback. And I think 50 feet of frontage and 25 of setback is fine. But the 25 of setback is going to be a problem. Okay. Well, well how about if I just ask Lisa if she thinks yeah, that's going to be a problem, 25 we and 50, do. and then you guys can meet again and discuss it. 
Yep, that's okay. fine. That's fine. I, I assumed you'd have another meeting with Lisa and then get back to us. So that's fine. Yeah, I will get back to you. Okay. But then we have okay. another meeting. That's okay. We'll, we'll have we have a meeting every day. It seems okay. like. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> it feels like we have sure. day. It, it, yeah. I, what's the planning board? The planning board um, meeting is. Casey, can you still? Jennifer talk? knows that. The planning board meeting is the fifth, April fifth. So, no, we have um, right. We have lots of planning board meetings. Yeah. Okay. We, we, can, we can meet again on the thirty first if we had to, right? So okay. we. Can, so. Well, actually, you know what? Um, it's the twelfth. Casey, the twenty sixth, I think. On the twenty first. And, and we have okay, another. I think, we're, meet, I think we're meeting with the finance committee. We're meeting with the finance committee on the thirtieth at five o'clock. Okay. Yep. And then we're meeting. Yeah. So we could do it then. Uh, we could. We, we, we could just put it on the agenda. Seven. We could put it on the agenda for, you know, like five forty. First item. I mean, four forty-five. Yeah, first item. Yep. Yep. And then okay. um, and vote that because. Um, I know Trevor has to go to school committee meeting and we have the drill, the great flood drill, evacuation right. drill. On what's that? On six. The oh, on the six, yes, yes, yep. It's six o'clock. Did you guys register for that? No. Yeah. Oh, okay. did we? I need- I did. Oh, thank you. Did, yeah, for did for you just you or for me? <laughs> did you register for us, Casey? I couldn't get it in my computer. The, the, it just. It's oh, I think I did. I did that already through the FERCOG. Yes, I'm good. I'm okay, there. but I need. I need. I'll you. have to check again, Carolyn, because I, I need you to register me because my the page comes up as not available. Hmm. Oh, um, okay. On my on my, uh, you know, with my filter, whatever it is, it doesn't. And so you I said that's on the thirtieth. Yes, it's thirtieth at six o'clock. It's okay. um, the what's happening is this is uh, it's a, like an, an Irene kind of storm yep. with cybersecurity attack. That's right. That and, makes and the yep. malfunction, and so we're evacuating. Okay. The old deer field is under would be under thirty to forty feet of water. And um, Beaver Drive and that area down there is underwater, yep. and Sunderland is basically wiped out. Wow. So okay. It's actually, it's actually very serious. So yep. I'm hoping we'll have good participation. This is from um, the, we got money from um, Homeland, Homeland Security. Yeah. Uh, John Pachurik and myself voted, um, proposed, and voted, get, got this through Homeland Security so that it, it is the entire Deerfield River. Hopefully. Um, okay. So, all right. Um, there's the 350th, our 350th anniversary meeting on Monday at 630. If anyone chooses to uh, participate, we have plenty of committees that are starting to get flushed out. We're so exciting with um, our calendar is getting um, solidified. So it's, it's very exciting. Um, Casey, do you have anything you want to update further? I do. So, uh, Rocky, number yeah, two feathers. Sorry. Hey, Carolyn, about the 350 is while, you, while you're sitting here, okay, I'm drinking a cup of tea and it just, and I'm looking at my cup right now. Before we, I lived in a town of Ware before I moved to Deerfield 33 years ago, all right? And Ware had their anniversary, the 225th. And this is a cup from Matt. Oh, and I just want, right. It's got the town seal. And, yep. uh, and here I am. I still have it 37 years later. And I was just wondering, it might be something you might want to think of as a. Um, we are oh, so we fortunate. Um, Jennifer Remillard is chair of our fundraising committee, and they have such fantastic ideas. But if you hold that up one more time, Rocky. Um, uh, this will be recorded so that we can show her. I'll show her that that um, for the Monday's meeting. Perfect. All right. I've um, got mine from the three hundreds, but it's a beer mug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have beer mugs. Um, we're we're actually really excited because there's all kinds of stuff that's happening, and um, I think after this horrible year 
everybody is so ready for a good, good party. And uh, I lived, as I say it over and over again, I, I lived in Berniston and um, I went to the 300th and it was, I just remember as a kid, it was really, really great. And so we're hoping, yeah. really hoping that we're gonna have a, a fantastic 350th year. Yeah, and absolutely. have a party for a whole year. Uh, just just because we've had such a horrible year yes so, <laughs> we're ready we're ready but there's but there's all kinds of exciting things the schools are getting involved with curriculum and yeah we have dig involved and um you know there's just really different groups are are involved and, it, and it's very exciting so i'm i'm happy be great. very happy that it's, it's panning out to be fantastic but we need we need people to come and just um be willing to participate in the sense that um yep. you know that we have committees that need to be fleshed out and yeah trade committee and the fireworks committee and you know stuff like that so yep. we just want to make sure everything is really really wonderful yeah so the, again that's monday at 6 30 the zoom link will be on um will be on our web page um, can I, uh, just a real quick, I know that um, Sue would love me to just kind of remind everybody that registrations are still going on for the uh, co-ed t-ball for kindergarten and first grade for um, Deerfield Recreational Baseball. Uh, I think you can yep. still register uh, to March 31st. Um, and, uh, and then also Frontier Girls Softball League is also, I think registrations are still available. You can always contact um, the recreational department. You can email uh, recdept at town.deerfield.ma.us or call 665-1400 extension 107 for Sue Antonellis. And she would uh, love to kind of get your kids involved in, in some sports. So um, it's exciting. And I can't wait for the warmer weather. It's been nice this week. Really great to get out and see people out walking and um, with you know vaccines happening and stuff, people will start getting out and sports and watching watching events. I know we're still limited. I do want to say that you know I know um, I had one, one resident reach out to me about um, you know watching their children play at uh, football. Well, you know, um, it, it's it's heartbreaking, right? This has been a tough year. People are you know want to see their kids play, and um, you can go to home games. So. Uh, and this is the same. It's not only Deerfield that's made this rule. It's every um, every school community that's involved in games. And we only have four games this year in some of the football. But um, so away people can't come and watch um, here. But you can if you're if you're at home game, you can watch. And I think you can bring. Um, I think the rules had changed a little bit before. It was just two parents, but now I think there's a few more that you can bring. Um, to watch, but um, but away fans aren't allowed to come to our school, just as we are not allowed to go to some other school and watch an away game. Uh, but hopefully there'll be a home game that you'll be able to watch. Um, and um, it is heartbreaking. And we hope for next year to be all done with this. But um, right now, the you know there is a limit of how many kids can be on the field. And by the time you get two teams, and all the you know the home fans and everything you just you're you're maxed out at numbers and and it, it's heartbreaking but it's the way it is right now and um and we hope soon enough it won't be that way but uh, what people need to understand is is it's our ability to contact trace an event if there's an exposure at the event we have the game rosters we have the spectator rosters and so if it's just open what happens is we have no ability to contact trace for that event and that's why um it is it is limited and and it is agreement by all the schools that um there are no away away team spectators yep okay casey do you have anything else <clears throat> i was just going to tell you that that um, class two dealer's license that Two Feathers has, mm -hmm. we've not received any payments per the payment agreement that we signed. Yeah. So, so, so that's a, 
according to that, <clears throat> the I want to know if the board wants to notify Two Feathers that their tax agreement has not been honored and yes. begin revocation proceedings of the Class Two dealer's license. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So that means we send them a notification. We have to hold a hearing, and whatever the findings of that hearing are, they get sent to the tax collector unless payment is received within a certain period of time. That's so fine. Barbara Barbara notified me of the, the process because yeah. I'd never done one. So I was going to, if you're okay with that, if you want me to do that, and you can tell me no, but if you want me to no, do I, that, we, we, I'll put I that mean, together. The whole idea is you want to vote or you just want consensus? Um, we can make a vote. I make the, the whole idea was to, to notify to give right. some leeway because you know it's a tough year and you know right. everybody's in a tough year and we had given leeway and we were going to approve his his license provided he paid the taxes and you know right. or, or the business was was paid up into I don't know how it all works right but I just it know was the business everybody else needs to um, needs to you know is is following the rules and and this this entity needs to do the same and if it's not okay. happening and we've given a lot of leeway and if it doesn't seem to still be happening then we, we have no choice but to to define so i would suggest license. a motion to begin the revocation process for a class two dealer's license for two feathers yep. i'm good okay. thank you is there a second uh I'll dave wolf a second okay all those in favor i i trevor mcdaniel i dave wolf I Carolyn Ness. Okay. Um, is there anything else, Casey, you want to bring up? The joint meeting. So at the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, they discussed having a joint meeting with CIPC, the Select Board, and the Finance Committee on April 7th. I sent the request to Julie Chalfont um, as it relates to the Finance Committee joining us for that meeting. Yeah. Um, I think we would have to start that meeting early because we do have a hearing that night. We okay. have, and if you look in your in your mail, you see the notification for BBC's change to their or their alteration of premises application, and that's the hearing that's at six fifteen on the seventh. So I think we would have to start maybe at five thirty on the seventh. Okay. On the seventh, fine. To do some things, maybe I, I'm not sure. Think about yeah. how that would work. Okay. I just, yep. I think we just need to be mindful that we have a hearing scheduled. And that if you want to have that conversation, both committees, both other committees tend to meet earlier. So yeah. five or five thirty. Right. That's fine. What do you I, think, I think, Carolyn? A five thirty is fine. And um, do you think we'll have enough time if we do it at five thirty? Or you're thinking five fifteen or five? Five. Maybe maybe? Five. Let's, five. let's just do it. Dave, can okay. you do five? Yeah, I can do five. Okay. Okay. Let's just do five, and then if we have any extra time left over, we can do some other business. Okay. All right. And then, um, then we can move right into the hearing. That way, that okay. we're, not, we're not feeling stressed about the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the only other thing we had was an item unanticipated. And so you had discussed this veterans database and online access project with Chris Harris yes. a few weeks ago. Yep. So he's finishing up his, pro his application process and he needs that letter of support signed. I mixed up the dates on that or I would have put it on this agenda but he reminded me this morning so I had sent you the letter as a mail item in the first packet in the revised packet I put it in as an item only anticipated since he needs it soon oh okay so would you be adverse to addressing that and sure. making a motion to approve and sign at your convenience make that motion I'll second that motion and thank him for his work on that. Yes. Is there, further, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. No, I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Noss. Okay. Okay. Um, is there a copy right. here I can sign, Casey? Or yeah, I think it's on the table. In um, okay, I'll sign. I it think it's I on the it. table. Yep. Next to all Jennifer's right. desk. Okay. Is there, is there any uh, public comment? All right, hearing none, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Dave Wolf from second. All right. Thank you, everyone. All yes, thank favor. you all very much. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. Oh, and, and, be, 
and be safe out there. You know, I still see that um, the emails coming through and there's a case here and there. You know, we've done a really good job of dropping that down from a very high number in Deerfield to, you know, get it, getting it really down low. I think we, last week, I think we had five total active going on, but, um, you but know, we're still persistent. It's persistent. They're persistent. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, and, and it, as people are feeling um, like, Oh, this is coming around the corner, you know, maybe they're letting the guard down. I just hate to see anybody get seriously ill from this and, um, or, or have a spread going on that we now then can't control and everybody's got to be in. So just please, you know, I know it's tough, but we're getting there. Please, yep. please be safe. Okay. 